Oh, my titties look. Now pop What? <laughs> that sounds like a song. Like a song. How my titties look. Ow. How my titties look. Ow. <laughs> From Thanksgiving through the end of the year, I eat whatever I want. Yeah. Because I know I'm, I'm going to gain weight, and that's the time that I want to be eating. Like, you exactly. Know, like green beans, collard greens. You know, right. Like, that whole bit. Exactly. But I can't be up 10 pounds going into my fat eating season. <laughs> that's, that's true. No. <laughs> that's not, that means. <laughs> well, I mean, it starts next week. What you going to do in a week? I'm, gonna, I'm not eating that ice cream. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Hold on, let me have you ready. Episode, episode 93. 93. Yeah, no, Chaplin. And we so are girl, on the right? YouTube. So JKB, true. right? Uh, um, DJK. Because they be read JK. And what's what? on the internet? It's Wait, on the internet forever. I'm glad sure. you all did that because I was like this. Oh. Oh, 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 girl. Girl. <laughs> oh not the Vaseline. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, she stayed locked and loaded. Right. Okay. You stay ready. <laughs> Let's go. And that's where you're going to say, hey, aunties, this is Kevin. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and okay. First of all, see, now what's my line? What's started, my line? If, if this, <laughs> exactly. I'm like line, line, line. line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Let's, let's do this again. Oh, They're like, oh, yes, he was on. He started off. It took him 45 minutes to connect the audio. <laughs> <laughs> no All right, words. thanks for having the you same. on, Kevin. Right, it was good. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> uh, hey, aunties. This is Kevin Matthews from My Life, My Style. What's brewing today? Introducing Auntie Sake. Ask your aunties. I want a bottom two. And gobble, gobble, Michael B. Jordan. So get your plate ready for my Norwich tea. We pour. Hello, ladies. How's everyone hey, doing? Uh, how's it hey, going? hey, community. And hey, you know what? Is my volume levels better this week already? Yes, already. Okay, good. Yeah, because last <laughs> week, bitch, you was screaming. <laughs> well, it was I mean, low. At, the beginning, at the beginning, she was giving me what that, what, AMSR? <laughs> right. <laughs> the today. fingernails. The okay. fingernails on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, how that's literally leading into the screen, thinking that's going to help us hear you better. <laughs> I don't know what was happening. I was having computer issues last week, so it is what it is. But community, we have a fourth member again this week. We have a hey. fourth member all the way from the other side of the world at that. <laughs> so it's more than time over there. Yes. We have Kevin, who's Dewan's homeboy from back in the day. But yes. Kevin has, he's all about the lifestyle and the, the style. And so we're going to get all this fashion tea from him today. But before we even get <laughs> there. Well, Dewan got y'all covered on that. <laughs> he does, but you know, we get another perspective. We get another it's perspective. a completely different, I mean, you on a whole different kind of level, Kevin. I'm just saying. <laughs> nah. Yes, she is. Meanwhile, her Tom Ford book, her, 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 right. her Tom Ford book, is right all the way there. in, it's right there in the screenshot. Keep it in the Mine corner, right is there. all the way down there, hidden off camera. So, <laughs> yeah, you got this Wait, cover. I was like this. <laughs> it's like, oh, that thing? That thing? <laughs> this whole thing? <laughs> Wait, oh, I was man. like, hold on, let me change it. Let me get, let me put the Bottega one up there instead. <laughs> Not the Bottega Veneta. <laughs> Not the Bottega Veneta. <laughs> so, Kevin, what is your auntie name, by the way? Auntie name is Auntie Sake. Okay, now. Yes. Okay. Kind of take some influence okay. from living in Japan. Oh, Love and sake right okay, right taste like because <laughs> I never had You never had sake? Wait, mm -hmm. what? No. You've right. never had it's sake. That's a, that's a, so good. That's a drunk uh, right there. Here's the so thing. Good. I so honestly, good. outside of like just liquor, liquor, I actually prefer sake because at least for me, it has the cleanest buzz you've, like at least for me, that yeah. you've ever had. Like, I, 
you, you you get you feel so like you get all the feels of being drunk without the cloudiness of being drunk. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the oh, I love I the love cloudiness because I could I could blame it on it. You got to blame That's it on something, right. you know, like. Oh, the, uh, yeah. uh, 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 Oh, <laughs> but that's because that's because you like that brown liquor. <laughs> that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different that's experience. True. You're right, though. Look, I, I can't. I can't get with that brown. I can't get no. with the brown. Oof. A little E and J, a little irk and jerk action going on. Oh, Come on now. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Grady. Oh, oh. Okay, Grady. Oh. <laughs> Come on now, Sanford and Son. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what you know about some wild turkey? Girl, look. <laughs> That's college days for me, wild like, turkey. You know really? I'm from the GI. You know they still drink it in the wow. GI. I'm, look, I was back home. Mm -hmm. We were doing shots of that. We did, when I told y'all we were doing shots of moonshine. We did shots of E&J, too. Ooh. And the parked a lot first, at the funeral recession. What was your first real, speaking of, like, throwbacks, what was your first real, like, drink drink? In college, when you first started drinking, what was that like? The one that oh, you always went to? So, sorry, mine was in high school. Throwback, low key. <laughs> I was. I, was, I, I mean, know, that's I was, not a good example. A come, on, pa, come on, come on, PK. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, let me think here. What was the first like? For the longest, it was like Captain Morgan. Like we, it was to the Bam. point where and it was Coke. called default. Captain and Coke. Like, it's like yeah. Captain and Diet. Yeah. And then yes, I can't um, even drink it no more. Oh, really? I still like it, but it gives me the worst hangovers now. So I, I don't can't do it. it. I mm -hmm. smell Captain Morgan. I'm a whoop. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. All those yeah, bad decisions. There's a trauma behind this, this Captain Morgan. I drank <laughs> back in my early 20s. <laughs> I'm not ready to unpack in my therapy sessions right. yet. So, you know, me meanwhile, this chick over here drinking the dirtiest, brownest, funkiest, dirtiest <laughs> liquor out here <laughs> and got the nerve. <laughs> That's what about you, Kevin? Weird. What was your what was your like drink of choice back in Zazé? You know, I was definitely a Captain Morgan. I was also trying to think I was sophisticated and thinking absolute was something right. sophisticated. <laughs> 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 you know, oh my God. Hey, I'll, nice. right I'll, have, I'll have an absolute. An absolute <laughs> soda, please. Hey, I'm not, I'll I have mean, an I feel like an absolute man for the soda today. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> then I thought I was doing something, telling him, you know, with a splash, splash right. of crab. <laughs> <laughs> Just a splash, you know. <laughs> that Look, we ain't gonna lie, that was the drink for about 15 years. Ooh. Yeah, I, I was know. like the drink yeah. for like 15 years. It's still kind of in mine. <laughs> yeah, it when is. I don't it know, is so when you're when, right. like, when yeah. I don't know what I want, I'm like absolute Mandarin and soda. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it, like I don't I even just, ask you anymore. Like, yeah. what reality? Like, which? I already that's know where to get it. <laughs> just because, like, a lot of times I'm just like, uh, oh, it's either going to be that or Tito's. Like, I prefer Tito's, but sometimes I'm like, okay, I want a little like flavor Tito's. in it. Oh, you don't like Tito's? Mm -mm. No? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a Tito's fan either. <gasps> I can do Tito's. No, I'm a Belvedere girl. Yeah. Oh, you like Belvedere? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a Belvedere. I'm actually like Belvedere more of a, I'm, a ke I'm a Kettle One kid. Kettle um, one you know, actually, too. Kettle One is, is, for me, the best when it comes to, like, dirty martinis. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I do yeah. like Kettle One a lot as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah. lately, probably the last five years, probably since I was like in Texas when I lived in Dallas, is what kind of got me into Tito's because it's from mm -hmm. Texas, so it was like everywhere, everybody okay. drinks Tito's. Yeah. Um, what was yours, Dewan? Then my first was um, a Crown Royal and Coke. Oh, she was boozy from jump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna start on crime. Let the rest of us college kids being our broken stuff. Can right. we get the can we get the rail two dollar drinks over here? Right. Yeah, I was like, what well, crown royal? Crown. Yeah, yes. I was a crown royal and coke jump. for a long time. Yeah, but I didn't start drinking until after I was 21. I literally did not oh, have really? like a drink. I was a I was a good little boy. I oh. did not have my first drink until I was after twenty one. But that's that's so rash now. I, can't oh. I, was a, I was a good little boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but and then my, and then my and then my shot my shot of, of choice was fuzzy Mabel's. 
girl. Right. <laughs> what was it? Fuzzy, fuzzy Navel. Navel. Fuzzy Navel. <laughs> I haven't had a Fuzzy Navel probably since like <laughs> it was either It was either that or a Lemon Drop. It was one of the two. Okay. Oh. Lemon Drop is pretty right. normal. Yeah. Like yeah. Lemon Drop was like before Fireball came along. Mm -hmm. Like Fireball, right. whoever marketed the hell out of Fireball needs a raise to this day. Yeah. Fireball, <laughs> Fireball was like Fireball was the, the reason for my whole social life in Chicago. Oh, absolutely. Just yeah. <laughs> like that's how I met became, you, Dewan, was over Fireball. This, this is true. We had that whole <laughs> really? tray. That whole tray. There was a yep. tray of like what 30 fireball oh my shots. God. Too and we many. all took two. Because like the bar that sponsored our volleyball team also sponsored Dewan's team. So yeah. every Sunday after volleyball, Burks. we would all Shout go out to Burks. A hey, Burks yes. in Chicago. And or just over time, we just merged the two teams. We're like, okay, see you on Sunday. Like, it was just every. We became Sunday. like sister. We became like oh. sister teams. We would play no matter when we played, and we would just meet up there and just get and just get hammered until oh. like until a good like seven o'clock. This would be Girl. Sunday, mind yeah. you. Sunday, like in the winter time, we would get. Yeah. We would go play volleyball hammered. until like one o'clock, twelve o'clock, one o'clock, and then we would all drive over to to Burks separately or together or whatever. Yep. And then we would get oh my God. fucked up on like, we'd have like one order of like food, like burger <laughs> and like tater tots, but the rest is just all liquor. Oh $150 <laughs> each later. Cause we just buy rounds. It would just go around the table. One person yeah, buy a round, then the next person buy a And they were slow and as hell. <laughs> because, right, that's why we had to start ordering two at a time because uh -huh. they were so slow. They only they had like so one or two. They, and they only had eight tables, but they were, and y'all were seven of those eight tables? This bitch. It literally, it would take yes, we had them all together. Because it was our whole volleyball team. It was like our whole, well, the yeah. two volleyball teams. Yeah. So it was like me and like Shawty and Dewan and Eric. Jake and, and Jake and Michael. And, oh my God. And that was like whole, baby Shawty. That sounds like the that crew. Was, it's funny yeah, when was, you say all those was, names. I, I know all those people too, yeah. but I know them all from different situations. So I'm like, yeah. damn, I feel like I missed out now. Like, shit. <laughs> you you I, did on those look. Sundays. Girl. And they don't we suck get like no one. Up. Sunday fun days like Chicago. It's so true. That, day. that it is, is the so truth. True. Not so even anyway, here in New York. Yeah, Kevin, we, we just over here reliving we our. Look, bad boom. Look, she said, I didn't wake up all the way over here and huh. across the world. <laughs> she said, sake, no. and we don't relive our whole <laughs> drinking careers. <laughs> Wait, I was like, we done took it all the way down. Mm -hmm. Crown Royal. <laughs> and I have so to have it the purple so velvet bag. The so right. Kenny bag. Right. The change right. bag. Yes. That is the change bag. That's like the casino <laughs> bag. <laughs> so, Kev, mm -hmm. you've been mm -hmm. in Tokyo for a hot minute. You just launched your video blog, your video fashion blog, mm -hmm. My Life, Myself. Tell us a little bit about why you wanted to get into this space and what your blog is all about. Um, You know, I thought... It would just be fun to do, honestly. <laughs> you know, I just felt like, and also you get on YouTube or the internet period and you see so many fools talking about stupid stuff, you know? I'm like, Back, preach. And, you, and you have tens of thousands of subscribers. I was like, huh? Like, <laughs> so at first it just start, ended up being just a way for me to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about, you know what I mean? And then because I love fashion so much, it just felt like a natural connection. Um, but then my time living in Japan, everyone at home always asked me, what's it like? What's going on with this? What's happening on the train? What's it like to eat? What are the people like? How are people looking at you? What's the fashion like? Well, so I just felt like it was a cool opportunity just to kind of have fun while showing everyone what my experience was about, you know? I think in especially being a black man in in mm -hmm. Japan, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I definitely wanted to be able to share that kind of perspective, but throw that fashion piece on it just because it's yeah. so different, you know? The sneaker game is different. The I mean, brands are the same, but the edits from different brands are different mm -hmm. because of the market. Um, so yeah, I just, I just thought it would be a cool opportunity just to kind of share my experiences from a fashion perspective about my life living here in Tokyo. So it's, it's been pretty good. Yeah, it's been How pretty How did cool. you get to Tokyo? Like, How what brought you to Tokyo? <laughs> you know, I... Um, 
And where, wait, I've even before that, Tokyo. too, like, where are you from? I am from Detroit. Big D. Big D. Big D. Michigan State. We did a bad rap. Y'all people, yeah. people yeah. came through this election oh, cycle. Yeah. Through. Yes, they did. Through. <laughs> now, you heard, now, you guys heard, though, they're trying to do a whole recount <laughs> situation with Wayne County, Detroit, yeah. blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. And that guy named Ned, whatever Ned is is in the, on the board in uh, Wayne County, stand up, Ned. Mm. This white man shut everybody down. He said, yeah, he, shut it down. he ain't doing this. Yeah. The, the, yeah. No. yeah, he shut it down. <laughs> he shut it down. He shut it down. So, so Detroit, yeah, born okay. in Detroit. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I think, Oof, being 43 now, now, and you're thinking about your life, you know what I mean? I think Detroit is definitely the place where I was born, but I definitely feel like Harlem, New York was definitely the place where I grew up and was yeah. raised and became yeah. who I am, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, thinking about my life now, I spent half of my life in New York. Yeah. So, and I think the formidable years about creating me and who I, who Kevin is, it's really, I, I think came from my, my life in New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so Detroit cool. all day, you know, Detroit, Detroit is, we, we, <laughs> you that, know, that you gets can't like say embracing. nothing about Detroit. Right. That gets embracing <laughs> on the heart. <laughs> yeah, yes. a different we will pull this Vaseline out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Detroit's a different laughs> we go hard. So, and you know, they're like, like what'd you say about my mama? Detroit. That's how Detroit be. Detroit, stay <laughs> ready. All day. Detroit, stay all day. All day. All day. <laughs> yeah. So, Detroit, the D. So, and so then yeah. you left, did you go from Harlem in New York to Tokyo? Yeah, yeah. I actually, I just moved to Tokyo in the end of January of this year because I oh, took wow. a new role for work. Okay. Um, so I first moved to Japan, moving and living in Osaka. Oh, So okay. I was in Osaka for about three and a half, almost four years. Okay. Um, and then I took this role that moved me to Tokyo. Nice. Then that damn Rona. <laughs> she, she came she, through she, she played. Um, yeah so i've been here about four years now i spent the majority of my time in osaka um i definitely wanted to try tokyo and do something different um and this new role popped up so then i moved to tokyo yeah so, so um, i've been here since february of this year so we're like right in the midst of rona probably over there then you know i went here <laughs> At first, my my contract was up for renewal. So it was time to really make a decision. Do you go yeah. home or your next step or do mm-hmm. you stay? Yeah. So there were a couple of different reasons where I was kind of thinking, okay, I was ready to go home. I miss my family. I love my family. I miss home. I just miss yeah. fates with all, all the BS, you know what I mean? Right. But um. I felt like, oh, it was, this is like a great time to stay. The Olympics are happening, yeah. you know, it's Tokyo, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, there's all these things going on. I was like, you know what? I could give these free I could give these girls a couple more years, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Right. And when I made the move, Rona was like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she said, sit your ass down. Right. <laughs> sit up. Okay. Snuck You're stuff in the house. All the way off. Now, she put said, look, it hello, on girl, the door look now. hello, girl. Right. Look, right. Look, hello, girl. You got it. <laughs> yeah. It was all, it was all yes. that. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now things are easing mm-hmm. up. So I'm getting into explore Tokyo a little bit more, which is cool. Yeah. Which is cool. What's the difference between Osaka and Tokyo? What's the biggest like difference? Those are like the two major cities that I know of, <laughs> you know? Right. So right. you kind of always hear the two, but maybe stylistically and just culturally, <laughs> how do you compare the two? You know, I think Osaka, if I were to compare it to home, I would think Tokyo is very New York, New York mm-hmm. City, very Manhattan, very that. Osaka is very LA. It's much gotcha. more relaxed, more casual, yeah. more laid back still businessy and still moving and things like that, but it's got a much more relaxed, more chill vibe to it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, even the news about important subjects, like 
the news is mostly comedy. You know, they're talking about the weather, they're laughing, they're talking about current events. It's funny how they're making it funny, but yeah. you know what I mean? So we're like in Tokyo, Chicago. it's very yeah. like CNN, like serious, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it, it's very much relaxed versus, you know, kind of restricted, you know? Huh. Yeah. Um, I always want to yeah, go to yeah, Japan yeah. so Same much. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little bit of a nerd. I'm totally into anime, and so like it's one of the big reasons why I want to go to Japan so bad and go to Tokyo because they got some really awesome like places to go and visit if you're into anime. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And also we go to Australia. So I peeped this because to get to Australia, you, you got a layover in Tokyo mm -hmm. from <laughs> Seattle. And so when I was planning my trip, that it ain't happened on this birthday, originally last year, because that's when I was trying to save these coins, because she's a poor girl. But <laughs> um, I chose like a like a ten hour lay. I was gonna choose a ten hour layover in Tokyo, so I can just mm. you know you know leave the airport a little bit, see some yeah. things, right, try to make right. like a two for one stop. <laughs> but uh, I want to go so bad. Same here. It's on my list. That was a part of the things that got shut down too. You know, like it's being on this side of the world it's so much easier and quicker to get to so many places you know like yeah. mm -hmm. australia it's a much quicker trip new zealand mm -hmm. a much quicker trip you know mm -hmm. um, thailand yeah, yeah thailand. Ex exactly yeah. Vietnam. like i mean i spent my first three and a half year, my first years here everyone's like oh where have you been into uh japan i was like uh nowhere i've been to thailand cambodia <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i wasn't even interested in, in yeah. japan at all mm -hmm. i was like no where are you going i was like oh phuket yeah okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> need some massages need some boys need that some cocktails Phuket. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. Corey, my husband, loves that part of the world. Like before, um, I guess what he does now, he was a buyer for like antiques and things like that. And uh, mm. he would like travel to China. He would travel to Japan. He would travel to Korea. And like he mm. loves the culture over there. He loves the food, well, mm -hmm. the food, but now his food eating habits have kind of changed a little bit. But um, and literally every year he's like, when are we going to Japan? When are we going to China? When are we going to this? Mm. Obviously, mm. again, this year, Rona was like, oh, uh, everybody sitting down. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it is so on my list to get over there because I have not been over there at yeah. all. Yeah. You know, Traveling for me, enough, I think and... it's definitely different visiting and living. Oh, I bet. Yeah. That part. You know what yeah. I mean? It's very, like, the <laughs> visiting part is amazing i think yeah. even on my lap my final interview was much more of a visit you know so the weather was amazing mm -hmm. everything was just like great you know what i mean so i was like oh the living yeah. i was like oh, oh. oh. <laughs> what was the big, what was like the yeah. what was like the biggest the biggest like shift between like the visiting because the thing with visiting is no matter where you go if you go to any city you're spending like two weeks mm -hmm. or less there or even a, a month or less, you're you're so on such a high, and it's so mm. romanticized. Even while you're right. there, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, but living there, dealing with the days in and the days out, and the you know transportation and the garbage and the all the everyday kind of stuff is so different. Mm. So, like, what was a catalyst that was a difference for you? There were goods really and there out? were bads. You know, I think on the good side the Japanese are so structured, so regimented in everything they do. The way, the way that they walk during rush hour, the way that they load the train, the way that they get dressed, the way that they eat, the way that they talk, it's very that. So there were so many good things about it. You, it's very clean, it's very safe, yeah. you know what I mean? Like when I first got here, of course I'm flustered up. Like I remember leaving my wallet, like they run after you. See my son, see my son. Like yeah. they're chasing you to give yeah. you your wallet. I mean, for an umbrella, you know what I mean? Like they're, yeah. it's very safe. People here are, they drink a lot here in Japan. Okay, so, now. I mean, uh -oh. people are like, after work, they tow up and they're passed <laughs> out on the street. <laughs> then they Shut wake up. up the next day. No one's yeah. bothered them. No or the one's touched pods. them. No one's their the wallet pods, no one's yeah. gotten their bag nothing mm -hmm. so i think from a safety and clean perspective it's amazing like you can eat off the ground i mean everyone here smokes cigarettes but you never see a cigarette on the ground 
Like they yeah, have literally ashtrays that people buy. It's like, so that part is amazing. But then the food was a shift for me. I do not like Japanese food. I don't actually. <laughs> Wait, what? I love sushi. But yeah, I'm not a no. So what have you been eating for it's, four years? <laughs> let me tell. KFC. Let me tell you. Air. I, <laughs> yo, don't don't play KFC. <laughs> yo, I will honestly like you know. D I mean, all day. D you know, all day. <laughs> at first, I was like, okay, so American chains. I was like, oh, Fridays, boom. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Oh, Outback. I don't even like Outback. Outback, boom. You know, so for a while, I was spending so much money and killing it at Fridays, Outback, American Chain, KFC, that sort of piece. Um, But I think the more I started to connect with different people, going with them and letting them kind of take the lead yeah. it kind mm-hmm. of improved a little bit i still don't like it i mean i like <laughs> my meat cooked you know same what I mean? uh, yeah yeah i'm not a big sashimi person sashimi is very big here yeah, like yeah yeah i i want like even i'm that unsophisticated negro like <laughs> when i go to you know uh we just went to um, Darrell just found his kindred spirit. Uh, you get uh, us, we never part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, I'm like, wait, wait, the, wait, I'm like in the twilight <laughs> zone. <right here. laughs> mm-hmm. Let me tell you, we sis, I get clowned Chris, on a regular s- for being <laughs> an unsophisticated Negro. I eat about five different vegetables, okay? I like my stuff fried. I, I look, come on. Fried, bro. lied. <laughs> steak, we went and had Ruth Chris. They were like, how would you like your steak? I was like, very well done, no pink, not talking. Like, you know how people usually are like, you must have your steak rare. Bu- no. Let me hear a nail moo. No. Send that shit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn move. I, w- I don't want, want it talking. No more. <laughs> <laughs> no more. So yeah, I, I think probably you. the food and that piece was the biggest adjustment for me. I'm such a snacker, candy, chips, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. You know, I like, I need that and yeah. nasty. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just- I mean, their the snacks are different. Are very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very different, you know? The, yeah, they want true. like shrimp potato chips or they yeah. want potato <laughs> chips that taste like ramen or, yeah. you know, potato chips that taste like pork or, th- but no. And your <laughs> one, your, was it your first or your second episode in your, um, in your vlog was taste testing of like these different kinds potato of chips. chips. I died. <laughs> I died watching you like take this and like, just looking at like the the water welling up in your eyes <laughs> as you're like tasting this food, it's just like so oh. hilarious to me. I feel like because if I go to if I go to like, Japan, I'm gonna what? come back skinny because <laughs> I ain't gonna be eating nothing. <laughs> Community, if you ain't watching this on like YouTube, you missing out. <laughs> you'll get skinny, but then after you start getting used to everything. Of course, now you're eating so much rice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So much rice. <laughs> so like now you're like, you'll put it back on quick. You know what I mean? It's funny. Yeah. Like when I go home, <laughs> my family will be like, hey, you want to go to Benihana? Bitch, no! Are you <laughs> <laughs> well, Benihana is <laughs> shit though. He said, what my mind's at? <laughs> oh, don't you send me a rice, a chopstick? I don't want to see shit like that. Okay. Wow. She said, so "I want to eat with a fork in my hands." <laughs> yeah. okay. When you come back what? home, what is the what is the thing that you crave that you absolutely have mm. to have? Just everything. <laughs> All the above. No, it? like green and, beans and you know and <laughs> 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 uh, uh, No, honestly, I mean, I do it the same way every time I go home, especially when I go to Detroit. You know, we Detroiters love a Coney dog. So Ooh, as soon as I touch yes. down, I'm at Coney Island for a Coney know, dog and some right. chili cheese. Some chili for so, oh, yeah, bitch. I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> oh. Um, 
but everything I, I i mean i just because it's so different here you know what i mean even yeah. restaurants like fridays and outback i mean it's the name but the menu is slightly different yeah. the preparation yeah. is slightly different you know so um i just i want to eat everything i want my mom to cook i want my sisters to cook yeah. i want to go to you know different restaurants i want to go to coney island you know i definitely get really sick mm -hmm. because the food here is much fresher yeah you know what I mean? like mm -hmm. it's much much fresher like i mean the chicken is you can taste it the, the difference you know and yeah. they don't use a lot of oil a lot of grease so when i come home i am like my stomach is like Oh, uh. yeah. <laughs> I pushed yeah. through. Okay. <laughs> literally. 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 <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> she, she said, when I get back to Tokyo, I'm going to be, I, just give me two days on the tour. Right. Yeah. And this episode is sponsored right. by Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what? How, how has Japan, that, like, how has it, like, influenced your style? Cause like Detroit to me is like, cause like I'm from like Saginaw, like so like mm. Detroit is a certain amount of style, like a certain aesthetic. Harlem to me, at least in, in my mind, has like a certain aesthetic. How does oh, yeah. how has like Japan changed or like integrated your style? What pieces have you like? Oh, okay, I'm taking a little Detroit, I'm taking a little Harlem, I'm taking a little Japan, and mixing this bad boy together. You know, I think all along my style was never Detroit or never New York, just because mm -hmm. I love fashion so much. I I definitely wanted to be inspired or I like things from all over. I definitely yeah. wanted to have kind of a worldly approach to how I get dressed, you know? Um, yeah, you but, were never really like a trend, like a trend follower. Like you, mm -hmm. you knew trends and you knew like what was hot and popping. So, um, Kevin and I know each other from way back in the day when we both worked at Express, uh -huh. um, Express Corporate. So he was more on the, you know, the merchandising side. And then I was certainly on the, um, you know, on the, the like store training side or whatever. Yeah. So that's how we know each other. Mm -hmm. But he never had like, you never like followed like a trend. You always had like your specific like signature. I wouldn't even say signature style, but you had your own look. Mm. I just try to play with every, I love clothes, you know what I mean? So I just want to try to play everywhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just want to try to experiment and, and do what I love and what I want to do, you know? I think Japanese fashion definitely has opened up my mind to so many different things just because like the what? perception of masculinity mm. masculinity and femininity is not the same yeah. you know like i'm yeah. such a i am a pocketbook bag Ow. <laughs> yes first first you know, first, first. You bag. <laughs> give me a first bag. first <laughs> <laughs> give me a bag okay I know that's right so you, you know, know what's I, interesting though kevin is that you've always hmm. had a really great eye for proportion and i think being in like in asia specifically where proportion is i, I spent a lot of time in, in seoul my mom lived in seoul i was just in mm. seoul last year my partner's company is a, a korean a south korean brand beauty brand and mm. you know, I, i've for me at least just an outside person looking and you've always had a i think what's been interesting is that even though you haven't played into like trends per se, you always had a really great eye for yourself and for others around proportion. And that mm -hmm. is so part of like Asian culture in terms of, you mm -hmm. know, what's boxy or what's layered and mm -hmm. things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think from my style also being shorter, I've always wanted to just feel put together. So I like my things a little bit more tailored. I like things like that. But living here is definitely, I have gone more boxy in so many different shapes and coats and sweaters and things like that, you know? Um, and they're very- Can I just say real quick, there was a pair of no, Kissy Miyake pants that you showed, I think in your second, like your first fashion um, uh. episode of My Life, My Style that mm -hmm. I bitch, I, I tracked them pants down and I bought them myself. <laughs> those, 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 it, on the they, are, they are amazing. 
They are. And I don't favorite have favorite a place to wear them pants. ever. They are my favorite pants on the pub. Let's just wear them in the I house. So them. Good. Oh my God. No, they are I so good. I love them. Yep. A couple hundred dollars favorite, later, they are so favorite. worth it. They are yeah, so yeah, worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But honestly, they like, I probably have like maybe six or seven pair. And the first pair that I bought looked just as good and brand new as the last pair that I bought. Like they last forever. The pleating stays in forever. It's like I, I just amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there are, are some CDs. There are so CDs. Right. I was like, I want to see this thing. You gotta watch you gotta right? watch the episode. <laughs> I, did, this, right? I, I, I think it's blazer. episode number two. I, think I saw the Nike Blazers uh, yeah. episode because I love a, a mm. Nike Blazer uh sneakers. So. Moment. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was I more into fashion. Mm. I'm such a jeans and t-shirt person like <laughs> i'm just simple i and got I think, you jarell i got you <laughs> but i think i'm that way because like i'm always like go 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 my mind is always like so many other places and i'm my personality is extra enough i'm like the last <laughs> thing i need is my clothes to match my inside because i already ain't then, for everybody i won't be for nobody her, at that point look, if her clothes match her inside she would be a leo but she's a Capricorn. <laughs> You're right. You are absolutely <laughs> fucking right. <laughs> That's funny. That you can funny. only have so funny. much. Yeah. That part. You're right. So what's your favorite <laughs> sneaker then? Like what? Because like sneaker culture in Japan is like crazy. Like we think it's crazy here mm. in the U.S. It's crazy over there. So like what are you feeling sneaker wise? I think this is playing for... You know, just we were talking about bags. So I feel like bags are like, yeah. you know, the safe way for gays to be fit. You know what I mean? Or right. to add that little piece in there without being judged. You know what yes. I mean? So right now, all sneakers that I'm loving, I just bought this Nike ISP, but I'm loving things that are like have a thicker sole, like more platformed, more like chunky, big. I'm not, you know, that Balenciaga sneaker that everybody has that's super, yeah. not into that. Me um, but what I just about the Prada boot? Something that's a little. What bit about more the design. new Prada boot? That's like a throwback to like you know like. Oh, his eyes lit up. The- <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> that is amazing. I want to see this Prada. Y'all talking about? Oh, hold on, let me look this <laughs> shit up. <laughs> Wait, you see it? You see the like, Yes, it's it's a it's a high. It's a very very high oh. top leather oh. boot that has a really thick chunky sole, but it's. I mean, like Prada. Prada is so yeah. architectural in its design. So it gives you like that throwback 90s combat boot mm-hmm. feel, but They're in a amazing. very updated kind of way. Okay. Small pocket on the side for Oh, those are cute. Are I like that small sick. pocket on the side. <laughs> oh, no, I'm like, what, you, what, what did you look up? This is, this is giving me some, like, almost like some Laura Croft Tomb Raider shit, bitch. Like, I'm yeah. like. Yeah, they are. They yeah. are. Yeah. They are. They're someone amazing. put this in the someone put this in the chat, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is blazing in my head. About these boots, right? There, yes. There you go. Yes, oh. yes, that's her. Yeah. Yes, that's her. Yeah. Yes. yes. You know what? Like, you. it's funny that you talk about like the masculinity and femininity. I put it on the IG storage the other day. There was this vegan leather. Not for thirteen hundred dollars. Sorry, no, ma'am. No ham, no cheese. No, ma'am. She said, "Not for the rent this month. No. Not for the rent." No. <laughs> <laughs> she said, nah, I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need the Marshall's version, okay? <laughs> like she was. Uh, like, you, you can get the you can get the Zara the pieces, version. Like, she said, the you can get the Zara version. Zara will have the pieces you, and put it will, together. <laughs> you can go to Zara. You can go to Zara and get these for eighty nine ninety nine. Hey, in about, oh, okay, in about come on, three now. months. Hey, and I got a coupon for Zara, yeah. so that's I'm there with you, Now your soul, now your soul might break that ankle. That's all right. You walking down the street. She but already got the ankles. Look. She is ready, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do her ankle exercises. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, but anyway, like the masculine and femininity piece, like I, I feel like for me personally, that's the last almost like frontier of just being completely okay with myself. Because like I feel like in my like throughout life. I've always liked some of the women's blouses and things like that, or like, like I just feel like they have way more options and way more fun. And I feel like mm. for me, I almost like 
stopped myself from experimenting just because I wasn't okay with myself for so long. And then I feel like now it's literally the last frontier. And it's kind of hard for me because I'm a bigger guy and I'm 6'2", so like a lot of shit ain't gonna fit from that section. Look, but if EJ, if EJ can do it, you can what? do it, boo. That's Juwan, a you true just statement. Beat me you to it. I was like, I just, EJ. You right on that. Yes. But like, I don't I was, like. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go all EJ. Like that's. I'm like, just saying. All like, but like, there was this yeah. vegan leather skirt that I just saw the other day, and I literally was about to buy it. I put it on oh, the yeah, IG I stories. Process that. She said vegan leather. I said, well, because you know, because some not places don't like want to be leather. Yeah, okay, I got you. Like yeah, I'm slow. I'm not hip, so you know. She had to process it a little bit. Listen, we help each other. We help each other. <laughs> and I wanted it so bad. Like I think it would be so dope to just like wear like to mix the men's style with like a skirt and like some sneakers yeah. or a boot or whatever. And I feel for me, that's like almost the last frontier of just being like, I don't give a damn. If I think it's fucking cute, I'm a rocket kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if I'm all the way there because I do know that people are still gonna be like, "Why the fuck is Corolla in a fucking skirt? Does he want to be this with it?" No, I thought it was fucking cute. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I wore a kilt. I wore a kilt for the first time last month, bitch. Let me tell you, that mm-hmm. breeze felt fun. Oh, was, was no. you naked, naked yes. underneath? Okay, <laughs> a bitch was twirling and everything. He was just spinning and shaking. Were you naked, naked? Were you naked, naked? Were you naked, I, naked? I wasn't naked, naked underneath. You know, I, 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 was saying, I think I'd be naked, naked, naked. But she was in public. <laughs> <laughs> but she was in public. She that's was walking good. around in it. That's she was living it. her best. That's life. what I really. That's what I really appreciate about like what Mark Jacobs is doing right now. Like Absolutely. if you follow him on Instagram, you know he's like really um, stretching like the gender lines. Tom Love Brown it. and what Tom Brown is Love doing, it. and like his whole IG is just like it is inspiration fodder for like you know a person no, who is like creative and thinks outside of the box and whatnot and like how he plays with not just proportion but the idea of gender and yeah. gender expression mm-hmm. and what that means specifically mm-hmm. for men it's just like and d- do it in such a way that's so on brand for him it's so mm-hmm. incredibly inspiring Mm-hmm. I think once the world opens up, I feel like I'm like ready, you know, I, like once the world, seriously. I feel like I need to start like experimenting with new clothes to be studying on these hoes because I'm like, y'all ain't seen me in a minute. Bars? So, Are you, you know, I'm bars? just saying, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know we bars. <laughs> Okay, so okay. let's ask the let's ask the style let's, let's ask the style guru. Okay, yes. for a person who is who has played it safe and you know, like with their fashion, they'd really, you know, they might have articulated what their fashion is, but you know, there's an opportunity and an interest for them to like evolve. You know, you mentioned things like, you know, like you really love a bag, right? And there's other things that, that are really like strong for you. What would you mm-hmm. say, what advice would you give for, I guess this is a little like, this is not really Ask Your Auntie, but this is Ask Auntie Sake. Right, Ask Auntie Sake. <laughs> Take your notes, because I want to hear this answer, because I'm like, how like, I'm a branch out. What would you, because think about it, like a person has their entire wardrobe, right? And, you know, it can be overwhelming for someone to think about, how do I transform my wardrobe into something that's, you know, that's more of my I don't want to say gender expression, but like self-expression. What mm. what advice would you give to someone who wants to venture outside of their conventional box? You know, I one, I think you have to be open to trying, you know? I think a lot of people say that they want to try, but they actually don't, you know? So you actually have to take that first step. I'm looking to at really... you, Jarrell. Look, I was, <laughs> I was ready because I, I literally Jarell... felt the Y off my chromosomes get red at that statement. But no, I, I think like, you're right. Tries, though. Like, there's some outfits that I'm like, no, like, Jarell, you, like, you're, you say you're a t-shirt and you say, that might be like your day in, day out, but like, you... <laughs> You try when for you like a pri- try. Yeah, for a pride, yeah, absolutely for a pride or a gay event, like those are the only times that I allow myself to try. Yeah. But outside of that, like I, I won't just be like on a Wednesday, but like she's a piece of cues kind of girl. Like, yeah, I, I'm I very am, you know, I just mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess like I'm also as 
forward as I can be, I also like to be a little bit reserved. So I don't, because I don't like people mm. to feel like they know me. I, I hate when people like, oh, I know him. <laughs> like, if I don't know you, you don't know me. You know? So I, <laughs> so I feel mm. like if I feel like my clothes, my style mm. gives away a little bit of me that I don't want people to, to see. And so I, that's why I think I tend to play it more on the safe and just plain side so people can't get a read on who I am unless I let them know who I am, if that makes sense. I can identify with that. I think yeah. that's why I don't have a style per se. I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this. I try to like mix mm. it up. I definitely want to keep the girls guessing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so, keep them gagging, girl, ow. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, I don't want you to feel like you know me exact or what, what, what I'm going to bring, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think to go back to Dewan's question, I think you have to start, for me, I'm in the same way. Like, I will try anything, but I also try to keep it a little bit toned down, you know? Mm -hmm. So what, is, what are those pieces that you fall in love with? I think it also has to be things you love. Because if you really love, if you're like, oh, this is cool, and you're not really into it, you won't rock it with the same mm -hmm. confidence. You yeah, won't rock I, it with the same, I have like, to echo that. You, know, look, you, you know? So I have to echo that. I think that. it's also, you have to fall in love with what you want to try. You know what I mean? And then you'll, you will make it work. And if you really love it, the way that you're wearing it in public, people will just vibe off of that whole feeling and vibe. I, that's a part, I think that is 75%, 80% of fashion. It's yeah. about feeling comfortable with what you wanna do and doing it for you and not for everybody else. It's I feel like I have to unpack some things because I like I have no problem being naked, but I have a problem trying new clothes. Like I feel like if I could bear it all, I should be able to wear whatever. Mm. And I'm like, hmm. mm. you know, like I, I just thought about that. Like That's why why can't I get over that hurdle if I'm I could be right. naked all damn late? Mm. I think what you said, Kevin, is so profound, and <laughs> I truly live by that. Like. Back in the day, you know, when I was still trying to figure out who I was and what I was and all that kind of shit, you know, I I threw myself into fashion and I had, I think, a semi-critical eye, but I bought a lot of shit that just, it was just shit. And mm -hmm. as I kind of moved more into like a minimalist mentality, not of like just having minimal of everything, but making sure that everything that I own everything that I have from my wardrobe to, you know, to the house or whatever I'm using, I'm, I'm in mm -hmm. love with. And for me, that mm -hmm. was one of the things that helped me decide what I'm going to buy and what I'm not going to buy from mm -hmm. a fashion standpoint, mm -hmm. because there is, n there is nothing like finding that perfect pair of jeans that fit you like mm -hmm. no other else. Mm -hmm. Because then when you put on ev everything else, it, feels like it doesn't belong on you. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we're so mm -hmm. conditioned that we have to have a lot of stuff or we have to have a whole mm -hmm. bunch of kind of looks or we have to have, we're so conditioned to like buy and dress for others instead mm -hmm. of buying and dressing for yourself and listening mm -hmm. to yourself when you hear like, or when you feel something, you put like a, that t-shirt on or that sweatshirt on or that that dress on or those stockings on or whatever you put oh, on. You the stockings, feels, the church I mean, stockings. Just, you know, just the whole, <laughs> the whole gambit. But like when you, put that sh when you put that thing on and it feels natural to you, mm -hmm. no matter how much it costs, it won't even matter because as soon as you put yeah. that motherfucker on, it's gonna, you're gonna rock that shit like nobody's business. Yeah. It can cost $2, yeah. it can cost $2,000, and it wouldn't even mm -hmm. make a difference. And that's a hard mm -hmm. lesson for a lot of people to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do love wearing something, and I feel like I just transform into this whole new person. You know, like, mm. the, like just that Wonder you put something on, you're like, bitch, what? <laughs> Tell me something. Uh, nothing. Ho, what? Aunt, like, you know, you just be. <laughs> Did you say not that hoe? Yeah. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> but you know, like, like I know, feel like I it's important to have something like that that you just or mm. just. You know, and for me, like when I buy something, like I always say, look, if I wouldn't take me home, I ain't buying it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. I gotta be fuckable. If I'm not fuckable, don't wear it. <laughs> not fuckable. You know, I used to say also <laughs> that 
there are a couple of there are a couple of different types of people when they get dressed there are people who get dressed for others and people who get dressed for themselves and yeah. i've always just been the kind of person that gets dressed for me and if you're vibing with what i'm doing then i'm good and i love it but if yeah. you don't then i'm also like well fuck you then <laughs> so, <laughs> i know i'm killing it anyway you bitches will be catching up in a couple you of years you'll see this picture you will see be on picture. what i'm doing you'll see it again in two years and i've moved on <laughs> it's funny like i find that the older I've gotten, because I used to care a lot about that. Like, my first job was at the Buckle, throwback 16-year-old Corella at the Buckle and helping people, mm -hmm. like, get the dressed buckle. and things like that. You know, that's such a big I bet you had buckle. frosted tips and everything. <laughs> no, no, but I had, but no, but no, but I used to have, like, the designs in my head and shit like that. But, um, but no, my favorite thing from the Buckle was, like, I had this chunky sandal by Doc Martens. To this day, I would buy that bitch again. <laughs> but, um, hmm. But I find the older I've gotten, the more simplistic I've probably gotten, like what I dress, like I used to be like layers and this and this. Now I've gotten way more comfortable and it might just because I'm just so much more comfortable with myself that I am comfortable in literally wearing a t-shirt and some jeans and a sneaker or a t-shirt, jeans and a, a loafer or whatever, you know? And before I would be like, God, you gotta put something else on. You gotta put like, you know? Not as much anymore. But I think uniforms are good. I love a uniform. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I do. Like, I mean, my clothes are all over the place, like, definitely. But the base of everything that I wear is grounded in a uniform. It's either yeah. black, navy, or gray. Yeah. It's either a pant and a cardigan. It may Ooh, be a pant, a sneaker, and a card. It's like, it's grounded, like, in the same yeah. pieces. You know what I mean? So, I... I a t-shirt and jean, just like Jero was saying earlier, a t-shirt and a jean is cool for me. You know what I mean? Like I, there's so many ways you can rock a t-shirt and jeans yeah. mm -hmm. where it looks new and fresh and it's not just like the regular t-shirt and jeans. You know what I mean? Right, so right. I think that there's an, under, I think there's an under, I think there's an undertone also, particularly for like, you know, those of us like talking, like I, th in addition to coming to terms with like your own, fashion sense i think there is also that duality of coming to terms with your own like sexuality and like yeah, both and going sure. back to what you were talking about earlier you know kevin about the mix of like masculine and femin feminine energy particularly in the black community you know we're taught mm -hmm. at a very young age that you know you know you don't you do this and you don't do that you know and mm -hmm. so right. you grow up with that that internal biases baked into mm -hmm. like what is acceptable for what a, what a black gay man can wear, you know, or just what mm -hmm. a black man can wear. <clears throat> and then fast forward to 2020 and you see binary expression and the blurring of the lines of, you know, of femininity mm -hmm. and masculinity, not even talking about, you know, gender or, or um, you know, or sexual identity or gender right expression, but more about like you know this concept of hard and soft and what that means, mm. and having mm. the freedom to be able to play with that. I feel like, and I don't know that if it's because I'm not a white man or gay or you know white man or any other minority, but as a black man, I feel like we have a certain kind of barrier that we just have to work through. It's almost kind of like mm. that same barrier that a lot of us have to work through with like our religion, you know, like having mm. to come to terms with what is our religion? What do our religious beliefs growing up have taught us about who we are and where we're going and blah, blah, blah. And coming to terms with that, I feel like we have to do the same thing with fashion. I agree. I totally agree. I think that's one of the things I'm loving about even being gay and not being afraid from fashion and what people are saying think moving to Japan also opened it up even more. I thought I was already open, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's just so much different. The way that, first of all, I think Japanese fashion men are just the shit. Sure. Like, <laughs> I say this to you, uh, I say this all the time, like, the men here are killing it. Like, they, they are like and all types like suits like 
suits are gorgeous, shirts are beautiful, pants are gorgeous, bag for work is gorgeous. But then if you're more inspired by hip hop culture, like always the flyest jackets, flyest sneakers, fly, like they just love fashion. Like Japanese women, on the other hand, Interesting. It's, it's it's like men are definitely driving fashion in Japan. Women are not. Mm -hmm. huh. Most like if you go shopping at home, like if you go to a mall, like most stores are female stores. You know yeah. what I mean? Here it's 60, the complete 40. opposite. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I go to wow. Japan. It's the complete opposite. <laughs> the men are really like concerned about fashion. More fashion magazines for men here. Like it's it's much more focused on men's style. You know, much. What's more. the last piece that you bought that you're in love with right now? Like you're like, damn, oh! I'm glad to spend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. That's a bad energy. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, um. Look, I'm like. All right. <laughs> um, I don't know. So you must not be in love with it, yeah, Like, return that shit. No, right. no, 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 no. It, no, it's so, no, it's no, so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard because I think also, and it's it's. I'm doing a lot of shopping here and feel like I am. Like you just have more access, and it's a different selection or edit a product yeah. mm -hmm. so i'm always shopping here because i think i'm trying to maximize on being able to pull as much special stuff that i can yeah. while i'm over here yeah. and not having to get on the internet to do it and stuff like that yeah, so right um it's hard because everything looks so special mm -hmm. and different like it's always amazing like i'm always walking around like oh my god oh my god you know what i mean um I actually just bought this vest, J.W. Anderson, and the front is like military and double-breasted down, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. whole back is out. Yeah. The entire, oh. there's no back at all. <laughs> and it's all like, it's all corseted together with like ribbon. It's, it's. That sounds yeah. really cute. I'm Sorry. Here for that. I saw it. I was just like. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Had, um, had, your, had your style yeah, yeah, yeah. changed with like Miss Rona, like being at home maybe more often than in the past? Like, have you found like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm in joggers more often now. I'm mm -hmm. in track jackets more often. Are you still being able to switch up your style as often as you were before? I you still switch it up it. just because for me, it getting dressed definitely sets my tone for the day. Mm -hmm. I love like that. It, okay. it definitely does. Like I definitely, I'm not saying that I'm getting like full on pants, da, 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 you know what I mean? But I even like zoom, I'm definitely getting dressed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause it just sets the tone for me. It's getting dressed starts my yeah. day. Yeah. You know, yeah. it sets totally. my tone for the day. Um, so, and I've always been a sweatpants person, but I'm also a sweatpants and a loafers and a cardigan right. or yep. something, you know, so, um, just mixing it kind of that way, you know? Yeah. 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 So she well, is Auntie yeah. Sake. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Auntie Sake. So yes. before we get to ask your aunties, like tout your YouTube, tout your social and all that stuff. So we can, Socials. you know, get like inspiration from what you're wearing. <laughs> right on. Right on. Um, I, I, I definitely try to keep it on. And also too, I want you to look at Instagram and you look at YouTube and you don't have to do everything. That's not what I'm trying to do. No, you know, no. I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm, and I definitely don't want it to come across like I'm just using this as a, 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 a YouTube getting dressed session. Cause that's not yeah. it either. <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. I definitely hoping that when people watch it that you see my thought process come alive as to how I'm thinking about how I'm getting dressed. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it will inspire you to think about some of the pieces that I'm mixing and matching and you can do it your way or think that it's cool for you also. You know I, I mean? love so, that. And I'm I can always honestly on say watching like random channels and you know, like 
it, it's a thing. So, I, and I mm. and I don't have anything for fashion that I like, you know, kind of pay attention to. So, you best believe a sis gonna be like in there. She's gonna be like, oh, I, mm-hmm. I know her. <laughs> Look, yeah. yeah, she got them proud yeah. boots on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what Thank what you. Kevin you do so well and you know I I've, I've been a fan of of your vlog since it started. I was like I was so excited when your first episode dropped and I've been like on every single one. But I what I think you do so well in your in your you know kind of like wardrobe explanations is you break it down for people without making them feel like um like they have to model after your personal like your style and mm-hmm. you make it accessible. Um, you make mm-hmm. it accessible to them by explaining to them things like proportion and layering and you know thinking about the whole look, not just you know putting on one piece and then adding on another piece. Mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. you, you do that in such a really great way that it's digestible by everyone that watches, uh, that watches your videos and it's really inspiring. And even though we share like a, 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 a strong pa- passion for, you know, fashion is design and we have very different mm-hmm. aesthetics. I love the way that you explain, you know, putting looks together and the whys behind that because it is oh, so on, digestible thanks. for people. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Where can they you. find you? Where, like what's, what's the vlog called? Um, my Life, My Style. And there's a couple of My Life, My Styles on YouTube. So Forget about the little Indian woman. Forget about the little country man that looks like he voted for Trump and look for the little chocolate guy. Talk there we go. Him. Yes. <laughs> my life, my style. Yes. Um, my color. life, my style forever on Instagram. Um, I had to add the forever on there because, you know, some bitch went on there and got the name first. You know, so I had to yeah. do a little doctoring up for that. Um, but yeah, my life, like. my style forever on Instagram and my life, my style on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah. Actually, I meant to ask this earlier. So being a black man in Tokyo and like Osaka and just Japan, are they enamored with like black people? Like what's that narrative, honestly? Cause mm, like, that's a good question. Do you feel like a fetish or like a regular right. person? <laughs> um, it's for me, it was very hard, you know, like, I think, especially in the beginning, you know, I was single, you get over here, you know, you get on the little applications, and, you know, <laughs> right. I was, you, I, was right. I was hot when I first got in. I was like, hey! <laughs> 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 I was like, hey, all right. You know, but then it was crazy, and it's crazy to even say it, but it started to become really annoying at after a while because I never felt like I would have, I never thought I would feel commoditized like that. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. So you're really not even, I mean, it, and also things like grinder, da, 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 you know, it's, it's, yes, it's definitely the quick sex connect, but also, for gay people, especially who are going in different places, it's a quick way to make a quick network mm-hmm. comfortably of people that you may meet. You have control as to whether or not you want to have sex or not. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. in the beginning, I was like, oh, you know, let me meet a couple people. And then at first I was thinking, oh, it will be cool to meet people outside of the office just to go have dinner with or cocktails right. or, you know, go to the bar, blah, blah, blah. But it became... I yeah. am this new box yeah. that you can check. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know, I've heard about black guys. Oh, you know what I mean? It's very, it it was very, 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 very that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that piece was hard for me. Um, also, Japan is an island and they want it to be Japanese, you know, mm-hmm. period. Yeah. You know, um, welcome foreigners and things like that. That's awesome. But I mean, <laughs> they really love it being a more homogenous society. You know what I mean? Like, gotcha. that's it. So for me, it was, and it's not kids, it's adults, like, like staring, like, mm-hmm. like, like, or pointing, you know what I mean? Or like, if I go visit, you know, like the stores for work, if I'm in the store, like everyone is looking. 
you know, like, or if I'm walking down the street or something like that, it's, it's very, very much that. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes my fashion probably is a cause of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> she, didn't say, she didn't say that she was walking around with them assless chaps like Prince. Okay, okay, look. <laughs> right. she, got, she got them Detroit cakes all out. Right, huh. exactly, exactly. She had them um, Stacey Adams on walking through. <laughs> Okay, now don't try to don't do Detroit. Don't do it. But you know, you know, I grew up on some state patterns. So I mean, I'm telling on myself. Purple and yellow. And, and doing it too, <laughs> killing it. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been hard. You know what I mean? It, it's a, it's definitely been a challenge. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the perspective, like, of America. What is the perspective of America, especially, obviously, all the change that's coming on even now? Has that been even, like, it's always interesting to me because, like, we're in a day in, day out here in America, but do you still feel that same angst and that same pressure? Does Japan, how are they interpreting, like, (laughs) the madness that is America right now? You know, I think it's... (laughs) One thing that really bothers me here is in order to get information and true genuine information, I think it's so important to actually have conversations with the people that you want to know about. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like Google is a great resource or YouTube or things like that. You cannot base your opinion or knowledge about a group of people or anything based on that. And that's very big here in Japan. It's very much word of mouth or what you saw on the internet or what you heard on Google or, you know, it's very much that. Um, So that part is very frustrating. I think it, and it's different perceptions, you know, um, the white is right is very big here. Mm -hmm. So white America is very much looked at like, oh, this is what we should do, you know, oh, this is what it should be. And, you know, things like that, you know. That's what we see in Seattle. Japanese women. It's, I live yeah. in Seattle with the for a Asian while, community. So it's, it's very yeah. that. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. very that. It's mm-hmm. very that. Mm-hmm. So if you have something that's acceptable, if it's perceived as white, it's more acceptable. You know, yeah. that's mm-hmm. why even brands like Abercrombie are very big here because it gives you that Americana kind of feeling. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Um, but we're, as Black people, I feel like I have so much work to do, not work to do, but it's harder for me because I feel like I'm always trying to show, no, 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 this is what black people really are. No, 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 this is what our group really is. No, 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 this is what our jobs really are. This is what we really do. This is where our family, you know what I mean? Where it's very much based on, so all black people, y'all got bad credit? So all black (laughs) people, do y'all be fighting? So, I mean, uh, one of the girl who used to work for me in my old office, she's like, oh, you always have on fashion. You always, da, 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 da. Like, do you like, do you, is your credit good? I'm like, bitch. (laughs) So you trying it, have several, thank you. You know, (laughs) so it's those. Do you want to know what it's like not to have edges? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Right. I would have got kicked out of a whole ass country, let me tell you. Yeah. So it's very that in terms of politics it's i mean it's looked at as not as serious anymore you know what i mean or it's more of a joke or it's entertaining at this point yeah you know um so what's happening with this like it's you're not even taking the role or the term president seriously you're more looking at trump and though they're two separate you know what i mean they're two separate conversations. You cannot definitely connect Trump and presidency and politics together. And that's good that so, at least that translates across the ocean because that's how we yeah. see it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also they're looking at it as a time, you can definitely tell, to pounce. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, so looks like US is slipping. Time to get in there. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's very much- Really? It's very much that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very much that as well. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's definitely interesting. And also like um 
I mean, it's news to outlets everywhere, you know what I mean? It's very much a jaded perspective of looking at everything, you know? So yeah. NHK is like the CNN here in Japan. Okay. And, you know, when all the rioting and all of that, you know, and actually not rioting, protesting. When all yes. the protesting started and that whole situation, I, they were reporting it like black people are tearing up their community. Black people are doing this. Black people are in the streets and like it was more like Fox News. No context of why exactly. It was right. very Fox News. So it was mm-hmm. it was bad. It was it was really 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 bad. So then also I was on my sounding board in meetings. Yeah, so I know you saw NHK yesterday. So just to let you know, this is not what how it's going it's down. Wow. <laughs> you know, so it's always a clarity moment. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I Ugh. think that part makes it hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's I also that's, a, that's annoying. I'm not such a fan. <laughs> of Japan, it's easier. I mean, it's harder for me. Right. Like, I think even, Jarrell, you said it like, there are lots of Black people who love it over here, but they love anime and they want a Japanese girlfriend because she's docile. Oh, and like, there are those different parts that you want to yeah, pull that's a from whole the culture, different kind of thing. which is yeah. why you're loving it. Yeah. But for yeah. me, my experience here is so different, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm not connected in the same way. Yeah, for mm-hmm. that. Yeah. 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 Well, man, we could talk about this all day, but um, <laughs> we're gonna have. We're, like, I know you have meetings and shit, and community. He was so gracious to move back a meeting and everything to meet with yes. us. So, like, we are so appreciative. No, so, we scheduled this like a long time that. ago before, like <laughs> you know, like uh, daylight you know, savings. Daylight savings. <laughs> so it shifted all the times because we're already dealing with what a twenty-three hour. I think it's like twenty-three mm. hour, twenty-two, twenty-three hour time difference as it is. So. Mm. It's crazy. It's wild. And it's it's funny, like we US, we need to get rid of this daylight savings time. It's Bitch. Like, yeah. Who are you telling? <laughs> right. We're Who dealing with it. It. like really. It's, it's the worst. Yeah. And not even yeah. all of the US does it. So it's just like right. that in itself is yeah. just ridiculous. So. <laughs> yeah. But uh we want to get his perspective on this Ashley Auntie's question real quick. So we'll get to that real quick. Uh what time is it? Ask, Ask your, your... My eye was like this all recorded. Jamel going like this. The wine going like this. Crazy. Like I was like, eh. if you're not watching on YouTube, you missing out. Subscribe by the way. Hit the like button and the bell and all that stuff. He was asking questions. You know, she that's said, definitely for you guys. What am I supposed to do? Wait, I was like, am I supposed you know, to respond the thing about it now, I'm jumping on YouTube with you guys now because before I was always listening to your podcast uh-huh. and then yeah. it would be, oh, let me just connect it to the speaker and then I can clean up or I can work and listen to it or I'm yeah. in the shower taking the speaker in the shower. But I'm like, these bitches are on YouTube. Now I can't watch these bitches on <laughs> in the shower on YouTube. I mean, half the show is what we say and what we do. <laughs> Girl. So I'm like, damn. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, 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 for sure. So- um, all right, so it says, I'm in this relationship where it looks like I'm the top and he's the bottom. The thing is, we've never ever truly had sex, no penetration, because apparently I'm too much for him. Uh, that's called okay. a blessing. Okay, okay. that's that's a stunt. Called, that's called a that's a brag. <laughs> that's called that's a stunt. Called a brag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's okay. I mean, at first it sucked, but I'm dealing with it. The thing is, in all my hookups, I have been bottomed. Uh, I have been bottomed just once and I kind of like it, but I like to think I'm averse. So if my boyfriend can't take mine, I think I could take his, but I don't know how to tell him that. I think he is so in the idea of him being the bottom and maybe he'll feel uncomfortable being the top. So aunties, how do I tell my boyfriend I want to be the bottom? Kevin, (laughs) the floor is yours. It, it was crickets for a second. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you can't blame that on the time, on like the distance. Between, right. Like, there's a little bit of the delay, 
But no, we was all crickets. We was like, Ooh. damn. <laughs> mm. I, lo- I love how he starts. I-, I love how this person starts out. This is anonymous, by the way. Uh, uh-huh. I love how this person starts out by saying, I'm in this relationship where it looks like I'm the top. Right. And he's the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> looks like I'm going to be the top. Okay. Yeah. Well, looks like. <laughs> yeah, looks like. Looks like I'm the top. <laughs> I've been defaulted to the top. Because uh, I guess I got I'm too much for him, so I guess I'm the top. Uh. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It's, uh, we always make a joke out of it. People be reading us saying we. They do. They do. Right. You got to be a little bit more, you know, sensitive or whatever. But, I mean. Okay. Who wants to go first? Who wants to take this? No pun intended. <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll. I'll take it. Um. <laughs> Um, I would just say it boils down to having a conversation. It really boils down to having a conversation. Or you could just like, I mean, not to like, you know, like over uh, generalize, not generalize, but I I, I lost the whole thing because I'm like, I had like, like a whole so? bottle of wine. <laughs> I, I had all of this, so <laughs> she, oh. she's, her, yeah, the whole box. <laughs> so uh, what I was trying to say is that you could kamikaze, kamikaze that and just jump on top of it. Oh. You know what I mean? Like you know, you could you could a have a conversation, which I think is always the best approach. You know, have a conversation, <laughs> say, look, I, I feel like I'm I'm uh, you know topping all the time, and I would love to feel you inside me. <laughs> Or whatever yes. language you want yes. to use. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or you can be a little bit more subtle, you know, and 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 play the submissive role, and you know, give them a little lap dance, you know, make them feel the cakes, make them feel what it could be like to just slide it out. Like patty cakes. <laughs> you know, and and just whisper in his ear, just put the tip in. Oh. <laughs> That's what I would oh. recommend. Oh. One of those. <laughs> I'm just look. I'm just confused that it's 2020 and we ain't having these conversations before we get in relationships. I just, I don't know why people think that it's not appropriate to be like, hey, how we fucking? <laughs> like, I'm not saying this is like date one. You know, you can at least get one meal out of it. By meal two, you need to know how far we going. As far as I'm concerned, I ain't trying to waste no energy. So one, I to Dewan sense, I, I agree in the sense that it starts with a conversation, but that conversation should have been and happened. Um and two, like I guess on the same on the flip side, like if you came to that decision after said conversation, you want to change your mind, that's cool too. But like Dewan said, you have to be willing to be like, hey, this is what I want. Part of any relationship, whether it's talking about sex, finances, Love language is the weather is about communication and being able to have those those talks. If you can't talk to your partner who you're in a relationship with about sex, especially when y'all supposed to be having sex, honey, screw honey. I mean, I can only imagine how other things are lining up in our relationship. I'm sorry, you know. Um, and it's okay to be versed, it's okay to be tough, it's okay to, to one day the wind blowing this way and you'll be like, hmm, I want to give the D, and the wind blowing the other way, and then that's day you're like, I want to take the D. Like, that is to okay too. <laughs> but let a nigga know where the wind blowing, okay? Pop, mm-hmm. Come on, Pocahontas, let us know just right. where we blowing, just okay? Just around the river bend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. I mean, because I mean, because I'm not going to lie. I mean, now I'm a little TMI. When I first started coming out, I end up, I feel like I was kind of pigeonholed into being more bottom because I have always a big old bottom. been, <laughs> but I got a big old dick. So Ow. on top of that, she didn't she didn't woke the people up in Tokyo. Wait a Wait, all I hear this is y'all knocking on my door. They like it's more black people. So I feel like 
uh, like being the person who has been bigger and wanted to try those things earlier on in my my gay life, it was, oh, that's too big. So how about you do it instead? You know? And right. so I feel like I was just kind of pushed into being more of the bottom in that sense. You know? So I get a person being a little too like, ooh, you know, that may be a little too much. Or I get being kind of put in the box of the, well, this is what you should be sexually because of based off how you are. I'm like, oh, you got a big butt, so you should be a bottom. Right. I'm like, oh, but bitch, I also got something to hold on to. So what are you trying to do? You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. But, like, it's definitely got to be a conversation. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure. The way it's kind of been worded, the question, it almost feels like based on your size, the partner or the boyfriend or whatever almost probably put that assumption of, okay, you got that size and I definitely want to be the bottom. But now if you say he's too big, it's like, bitch, you too much to chew. It's like, you've been off way too much, you know? So it's just like, you gotta have those conversations because like, especially, get, especially you being get first. Yourself a bottle of- <laughs> Look, get just some up poppers, social poppers, poppers or something. And, you better get you better get a popper and be a champ. Uh, relax all the muscles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> but, but I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people end up getting scared to have these conversations, though, especially like if you like are verse. A lot of people try to make you be one thing or the other. Mm. It's just like if you, like you said, if the wind blow one day and you want to take dick and the next day you want to give it and maybe something at the same damn time, so be it. Like we should be comfortable talking about sex. And in 2020, it's still such a huge issue in so many relationships that maybe one person may be a little more adventurous and you don't want to turn your partner off or your boyfriend or perspectives off and things like that. Like... We gotta be, we gotta learn to be comfortable with these conversations. And if at the end of the day you want to be versed and things like that, and your partner doesn't want to top, then that's a conversation you're gonna have to figure out. Either we're staying together, and we gotta figure out some 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 ways, <laughs> or, or you gotta get you some toys, some toys, or it's not gonna you're yeah. gonna be you're gonna become frustrated. You're gonna become sexually <laughs> frustrated that either you're going to step out and that wasn't the agreement or you're going to have to have some kind of open agreement or something. You're going to have to have a conversation like they were saying at the end of the day because you're going to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a conversation needs to be (laughs) about that. Needs to be like an interview. So are you top? Okay. Are you a bottom? Okay. <laughs> does it? Like, on a, on a day, exactly. Like, it does it. I feel like, how exactly on a day, yeah, like, on a date and casual conversation, you can figure out what's yeah. going on yeah. based yeah. on dating conversation about what's yeah. going on. I definitely agree yeah. with all of you. Like, it, it needs to happen early, in yeah. the early stage, because... And I think people are afraid to do that as well because they end up liking someone. They want to be in a relationship yeah. so bad. So they don't want this one thing to disrupt the good thing that they've got going on. Yeah. So that's why it like waits and waits and waits. You got to have that chat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but just and there's, and, and there's ways. Oh, go ahead, boo. I also feel like this might... I mean, listen, there are just some people that just aren't interested in topping and that's okay. But it says that you're in mm-hmm. a relationship. So I, I have to believe that there's there's more at stake than just randomly hooking up with this guy that just always wants to spread his legs and that's fine, you know. So, right. but if you are in a relationship with this individual and you know this is something because based I'm like looking at the you know like the like the write up here and it's like I tried bottom I tried being a bottom once and I kind of like it so I I think I'm versed <laughs> and my and then it's like, but if my boyfriend can't take mine, I think I can take his. Well, the question really is about whether or not you want to be penetrated by your partner. And one sure way of doing that is having a conversation and asking him, hey, you know, I'll, would you mind if we flipped yeah. you know, the roles in the bedroom, whether it's, you know, <laughs> on a regular basis or, you know, whatever. And it also may be, if you've only tried it once, maybe you might want to play Try with it. some toys. 
<laughs> or try to be more before you get in a serious relationship. <laughs> well, I mean, but he's already in a relationship. So like yeah. maybe you might want to introduce some toys into your relationship and have your partner, you know, you know, maybe do the insertion into it. Yeah, you know, do the insertion <laughs> that way. You know, because if he if he did it once and what? he tried it and he kind of liked it, you know, you gotta make the face when you're doing it. It's true. It's true. You know what? It's true. Not the, not the. That's a valid statement. But you know what I mean? Like you gotta, you, you gotta. Uh, I, I can't with y'all. See, that's how, this is why they be coming for us in our DMs. It's true. Wait. <laughs> Cause you're all kinds of fun. But all, all that to say, you know, like number one, you have the option of, you know, kind of like, you know, just easing him into it by kind of like teasing him with like, you know, your your ass play, you know. So, you know, give him a strip tease, grind him a little bit, you know, see if that turns him right. on. Uh, another way is to have, just have a full on conversation. And, you know, full on conversation doesn't have to be, to Kevin's point, doesn't have to be like, you know, an interview, but it can just be, hey, listen, you know, I would love, you know, I know that you're in this situation, you know, pretty large and I want to try and take it. You know, can we make that happen? Maybe, maybe we can, you, maybe you two can make it like a fun little sex game, you know, like play a little like wager, like, oh, well, whoever finish, whoever finishes, you know, like, I don't know, eating dinner first or, well, oh, that's probably not the right one. But. <laughs> no, no, bitch. No, no, get some cakes. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere here if you're going to eat something. Right. But, but you know that you can make do something fun with it, like whoever gets home first from work, or right. you know if you're both at home, like make make something fun out of it. You know that gives you both the opportunity to really play into like the fantasy of it. And then if if, if that all fails, you know get yourself a toy. You know because if you don't really know whether or not you like it, and you don't know whether or not you might be able to take your partner's you know right. member because it's it's according to you it's so big. Um, then maybe you might want to play with I think his is the similar big one. sizes. His is the big one. Okay, I'm not read that wrong. But still, but yeah, I, I agree. I I think you. I think that's really good advice in the sense of there are ways to make it happen outside of it just having to be him penetrating you. Even if he is maybe just strictly bottom, we'll then introduce toys. You know, like there's a reason why you know throttles are a thing now you know, like open relationships are a thing and stuff like that mm -hmm. now because people are also getting in relationships where maybe they're not sexual compatible or they may not even believe in monogamy either. Or it's even you shifted know. over time. Like, that's yeah, another part absolutely. Just like over time, things just change and you grow and whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. But yeah, if you care about that other person that you're, or people that you're in the relationship with, you're gonna do it. The, you're gonna you're gonna figure a way to make it work and mm -hmm. find, you know and that's Absolutely. the thing it's just like a lot of times we we're so scared that oh they're gonna break up with me or this and that mm -hmm. they, that takes more of the foundation mm -hmm. <clears throat> more than the gratification that is sex you know mm -hmm. um, and then you and leads to building up resentment which then does. can lead to building up other shit that happened in a relationship and next Absolutely. thing you know boom you single it's exactly. real talk so it's just like, and it's just interesting that they're in a relationship. And I mean, it, maybe it's not interesting or weird or anything like that, but it's just like, they've never had, truly had sex, no penetration. So it's just like, you, you, you've got some conversations to be had, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you don't want to be frustrated. But you know, mm -hmm. Life is short, but life is also long. <laughs> right, yeah. That part. I mean, and, and, and like, all transparency, not, all you transparency. You don't want to be like, frustrated. Fizz and I want four months in our relationship before we had sex mm -hmm. you know like so it's possible to get in a Absolutely. relationship without having sex first you know yeah. but at least still have those conversations like yes. we knew where we stood right. sexually when it came to the compatibility beforehand you know we had all those conversations beforehand so you know it wasn't like what are we doing yeah, right doing? What? Doing what? You both backing um, into each other. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? <clears throat> like, are you ready? I thought you were getting ready. Nine. I'm not ready. <laughs> like, <laughs> take it over the 9 out of 2000. Okay. <laughs> But that's a good question. And I think it's just something that people should start being more open about. I mean, we're all grown, we having sex. Yeah. Stop acting like we all in grade school again in health class. I'm like, eh, that's gross. No, bitch. You must have liked something. And, right. uh, mm. and we, I mean, if 
is that big, we kind of want to see pictures. Thank you. Send them to AYA at minorityreport.com. <laughs> Don't send me no pictures because Fear's going to be like, look here. Send that shit to Auntie Corral. Girl. Send it to me. Send it to me. Too. I fuck up my phone. Right. I don't I'm want that picture. I'm going to I got you, boo. <laughs> right, because we at, we at home now. We don't have to worry about sending to each other cryptid anymore. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we would send each other right just oh, outside of God. like minority report we'd be sending each other pictures Ooh. of like stuff that we see on the internet or, oh, yes. or whatever mm. but because we would be in meetings before the rona hit we would have to send it you know how iphone has that little like the visible little ink. filter the, yeah, the <laughs> oh, visible yeah, ink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so we would send mm. it like that so you would have to like be on your phone like <laughs> <laughs> what is this <laughs> yeah yeah ex- exactly exactly Exactly. Well, well, let me put it this way. That's how I sent my pictures. Yeah, the ones that we pictures I, that I found. I, not I, I my rarely. pictures, but the pictures that I found that I wanted to share with my my yeah, teams. I, I rarely send them as well. My man. bad. She's <laughs> like, like, I got excited right. and wanted to send. Here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm in a phone. fucking meeting. I'm in a fucking meeting. I get a preview of this big ass donkey dick Ooh. on my phone, Ooh. and my phone is up on the on the conference table. Yes, with Lord. 18 other people. <laughs> But continue to say your SG aunties for real. A Y A at minorityreport.com. DM us if you need to, Texas and all that good yep. stuff. Um, and continue to send them because like we're getting we're not getting low, but like we haven't gotten brand spanking new ones in a little bit. Like we're still going through the queue, but we like these brand spanking new ones, you know. So if you're going through some stuff in corona times or quarantine times, or you had a quarantine hookup that didn't go right or you know, whatever. You couldn't get them to want. leave. Let us know. Or you got a new dick that's too big, <laughs> like like this question. Let us know. We want to know the team. Yeah, cut, oh, and send pictures, it. please. Send exactly. send pictures. We want to see. We might be in relationships. Visuals are we, necessary. But we still <laughs> like the pictures. <laughs> For, I'm married, but I still like the pictures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So it I can show my husband. Only lookers. <laughs> then it might turn my husband on, and we might get popping off just right there. So come, come on, help a brother out. <laughs> help, help, a, help, help a couple in need. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Down one eight six six. No. <laughs> anyway, so Kevin, I know, like I know you, you're a busy man, so you're more than welcome to stay to the end. We probably got about fifteen more minutes of just some ad hocs, but if you have to hop off, we just appreciate you taking the time. So we want to give yes. you the flexibility because it's nighttime for us. <laughs> I was actually gonna say, um, I'm actually gonna hop off. I just yes. got a message from my boss. Her, so, yeah, you get off me, girl. Let me make these coins. coins. Yes, yes, ma'am. Now. Them coins need to go in the purse. <laughs> so <laughs> you need to make that. Wait, wait, wait. I'm Prada boots. <laughs> I'm like this. Okay, yes. so. <laughs> okay, come yes. on, bang. Now, see, this is why y'all need to be watching us on YouTube. Absolutely. Because if you're not watching us on YouTube, you just you missed miss, the whole moment. You a whole moment. <laughs> and a look. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, we so appreciate you Absolutely. and thank you for, you know, for doing this. And, you know, again, can you just, you know, shout out your, your socials and where people can connect with you? Obviously we'll, you know, we'll promote you, but if you can just yep. share where people connect with you, that'd be great. No, right on. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dewan, for thinking about me anyway, to invite me on. I appreciate it. Thank you to the other two guys. Thank you guys so much. It was great meeting you. Definitely. It's actually funny now to, meet and connect with you <laughs> usually i'm laughing or crying in the shower or something like that with what you all are talking about um so it's good to finally get on with you guys on the thing um on, on the podcast i really appreciate it um follow me at instagram my life my style forever the number forever um and on youtube at my life my style little chocolate Yes, yes, it's like a girl. milk dud. Come on out, girl. Yeah. 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 Melanin, milk dud. melanin deliciousness. Yes, Absolutely. yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, you yeah, know what? So that's it. Enjoy your day. She, she got a whole yes. full work day ahead of her now. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> while, while everyone's drinking, sh- finishing bottles of wine, oh, and that, yeah, I right. was like, <laughs> damn. Right. Wait, with my orange well, we're gonna juice, have, I was like, we're gonna ha- yeah, we're gonna have to use you as our like our our Tokyo fashion correspondent. Absolutely, and have have you yes. check in every once in a while that works with your schedule. Right well, on. Should ha- well, let me know. I would back love after, it after uh, like yeah. the Oscars or something to get your take on some of these. Oh, the right on! Stuff. I love it. 
Yes, I love cool. it. I love it. Perfect. Yes. All right, Boo, enjoy your day. Thank yeah, you guys so day, much. Boo. See you guys later. Mwah. Mwah. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of fashion, too, though, um, y'all saw Harry Styles on the cover of Vogue? Yes. Yes. I mm -hmm. here for it. I thought he looked great. And I it was it. awesome to just see him in just these feminine pieces that are just not stereotypical for, like, straight men. Like, I just, I just love how comfortable he is with himself. Yeah. You know, he um, gives me and... David Bowie vibes, like 2020 mm -hmm. David Bowie vibes, very yeah. much like that, you know, like gender fluid. It's not mm -hmm. about sexuality. It's just about personal creative expression of who he is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's what he I want to get, get to. He can get it. You know, I'm sorry. I never thought he was like that <laughs> handsome. I was more like Zayn. <laughs> Zayn <laughs> can absolutely get it. But I'm attracted to him because I feel like just the freedom that he has is so attractive to me. Um, to yeah. wear what he wants, to not care what people are saying. Like, he's like, I I'm going to do what I want because I like it, you know? Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. that's what really kind of makes him sexy to me. Um, but just like out of, like, aesthetics, Zane was always it for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I just feel, for some reason, I just feel like that level of comfort comfortableness from the straight man just gives me BDE. Com comfort like, Comfortableness. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. Right okay, anyway, the point that I'm saying is gotcha, I get girl. BD in it. I get BD. Yeah. Really? That's, hmm. Yes, I do. Okay. I do. I don't mm -hmm. know what I get from her. I just get, I just like freedom. I don't like, get anything. <laughs> I don't get none of it. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a, you know, like an attractive guy. And, you know, I love that he has his style, but like, it, like he doesn't it. do anything for me. <laughs> It doesn't turn me on. Doesn't turn me. Yeah. I'm like I'm. I'm like neutral. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He could. He could walk in with. There are just like people that could like have the most amazing bodies or the most amazing personalities, and like I'm just like mm, it doesn't okay. do anything. Yeah. Me. Yeah. 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 I like the freedom yeah. of it. I, yeah. I don't know. Like I mean, he's not like my. I guess I don't know if I have a stereotypical type. Like I mine is like the UN, <laughs> but. uh <laughs> But I do, I just like, I think maybe even at this stage of life, I just like when people are just free, yeah. you know? It's just like, nobody got time for like just this, the, the stereotypes and all that. It's just like, oh, are we past Just be yourself, this shit? just be yourself, yeah. yeah. You so, know who's, you're speaking of like BDE, somebody that has BDE but, in BDE but doesn't have a BD. Oh, oh no. For me. Uh -huh. it, and, and and but like it's so attractive. <laughs> I I I can't wait to hear this. Story. Right, I don't know. I, don't I know also want to know how do we know this that too? part. Oh, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf You're has right. BDE, but he doesn't have a BD. You're right, and and that doesn't matter to me. Like there is something very like for me, sexually attractive about Shia LaBeouf mm -hmm. and his manic craziness mm -hmm. and also like his physical aesthetic that he was just on the cover of, um, of I think GQ magazine yeah. in fact, and I was just like, God damn, he is like, every time <laughs> I see him, he is so like, just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and crazier and crazier. And he has that like BD, that, that big dick energy. Yeah. Because you don't know what BDE is, but he does not have a BD. At least from like the bald shots that kind of uh, ruined the internet. Well, I mean, you know, I oh, you see like the, from the naked, yeah, he's, he's well, been naked. Well, I have seen the naked ones. Oh yeah, that's, it's, uh, I'll send it to you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but you know who, you know who could get it though? Who? Michael B. Motherfucking Jordan. All of it. <laughs> Bitch. All People's day, sexiest man. <laughs> and, that's a day, three, and that's a three people. That's three black men in a row that have been people's sexiest man. For years, we were complaining how they did not have people of color on their their covers at all. Okay. You know this song. You know a girl take that that you know about to be on YouTube. <laughs> you can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> or put a little blur on it. I'll, I'll put a little blur on that boat. I gotta remember <laughs> which movie we had the episode. Hour 33. Hour 33.16.0. <laughs> oh. But um, but yeah, no, Michael B. Jordan, 
bitch. That's a good looking man right there. That's all day, every man. day. Oh my god, yes, like, absolutely. Oh, he. Oof. And has there? And you said he he sexiest man alive for yeah. the third time, right? Not for the third is, time. Is He's the he third the, black man in a row. So it was Idris, John man, Legend, gotcha. then okay. Michael B. Jordan. And before that, gotcha. the only other okay, person yeah, really yeah. of color was yeah. Denzel back in like the 90s. So yeah. it's interesting. Finally, three years in a row, they're kind of sh- that hopefully it's a continued trend. And not, it doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. have to be black men. It could be Hispanic. It could be Native American, whatever. Right. But it's just like finally they're giving some people of color some recognition on their cover yeah. and having three years in a row. That's dope. And I mean, like, it's hard. I mean, Idris, John Legend, and then Michael, that's a nice little trifecta. That is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, the John Legend I thing is all three of them. Mm-hmm. At the same you know. damn time. At the same mm-hmm. time. At the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wait. What you scrunching your face at? Uh, who? John Legend? Mm-mm. Have you seen this cakes? John I don't Legend care. Got some cakes. I don't care. I mean, did you hear this whole conversation we had about what's his face? Yeah, you're right. I feel like John Legend <laughs> might choke you or slap you a little well, I bit. I think John Legend. I feel like face John. Le- so. I feel like John. At the same time, right? Like, <laughs> I'm choking you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the soundbite for the episode. <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like he's. He a, I, feel, I feel like he's a considerate lover. I feel like he'll yeah. be like, you, "You want me to yeah. do what? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. To what degree? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You need a, did you need a safe word? Right. Let's execute this. See, I don't you need know, all that. Like, I want somebody to just bust me on the side of my head with a bottle. Come on now, <laughs> just br- <laughs> just like you know. Like, Send me to the hospital. Like, that's some good dick. <laughs> like, ooh, why, why you got stitches on your head, girl? Why you got stitches? Girl, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> and she going to show up around two, be like, now bust me on my ass, bitch. <laughs> oh, I can't stand y'all. <laughs> Oh my lord! He got he in there in the bathroom <laughs> with the ace bandage around his head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, bitch, I got stitches, but I got fucked up. <laughs> look, it's a look. <laughs> right, it's a look. <laughs> Don't you see it? <laughs> right. Oh my god, Yo, you ain't lived yet, okay, honey? Let oh me tell my god. you. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, I got oh. wrinkles and scars oh. to tell this huh. life story. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Lord help. Damn. <laughs> Uh, um, I don't even know where to go after that. Like, my- but I wanna, I wanna <laughs> circle back though to the Harry Styles cover uh-huh. because there was one, there was one part of it that I feel like I want to talk about that I really didn't get, uh-huh. and I want to shout out those who are triggered by seeing him on the cover. You know, I not all of us have the same. A trigger in the regards that seeing a straight man be praised for being in a dress, but as a gay, a trans man or woman <clears throat> being in a dress and being beat up for being yeah. gay or trans in a dress, you know? Yeah. And I really had not thought about th- thought about it because that's not my trauma, that's not my story. Right. Um, but I do want to say for those who who have experienced that. I, I get it. I I see you and I and I want to definitely be more sensitive to that. Yeah. And so I don't want to make light in the sense of like, oh, I'm praising him. I'm I'm praising the fact that as a society we've gotten to a point, but I also want to I also want to tell the society that we need to recognize that there is also trauma that comes from this, you know, and sure. that we need to talk about this, that this is, could be triggering because that experience has not always been positive for others who were <laughs> doing it well before it was cool. Right, right. You know, is, so I, I do want to say that there is some, there's still work that needs to be done as far as being like, you know what, for those of you who, who have experienced mm-hmm. that, my bad. And sorry for not sticking up for you or, or you know, I, I, it, I can't believe that the world has not acknowledged that and then moved on as if it never exists. Like, I feel like a part of that is erasing someone's trauma as if it, just to get over it. And it should never be something where you should be told or made to be failed to just get over it. 
especially doing like it's yeah. a, a trans awareness week right now as we record. Yeah. Oh, um, I think today's yeah. like the last or tomorrow's the last day of it, the nineteenth. Yeah. Um. So no, that's a very valid point. I agree, uh, Jarrell. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so I'm over here trying to put our Instagram story up. I'm all silent. Um, <laughs> I think that was the kind of big stuff this week. I, I, like the yeah. whole, the What about the Fresh Prince thing? reunion? Are you going to watch the Fresh Prince reunion? I am so... That came out today that we're recording, right? Or tomorrow. No, tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow is when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And the, the gag of it is that he has both aunt, yes. both aunt beds. Yes. And I am so here for... The, like, whatever that conversation is, just the fact that she was there... Yeah. To me, when you think about growth... <laughs> you know, yeah. like that to me was like this has been a right cloud for the last what twenty five yeah. years of mm -hmm. her being mm -hmm. quote unquote kicked off the show because of just like issues amongst the cast and things. Like I saw an right. interview with it was Alfonso, Karen Riviera, yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. who's the third person? I forget now. And they were asking Karen just like, what was your like your response when you saw her? And she was like. I didn't realize that I was still carrying some of that yeah. weight in that cloud. She's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's like, me personally never had issues with Janet. Oh, she was on the Tamron Hall show. That's what it was. Um, and she was like, I personally have never had issues with her, but she's like, I know there were issues. And it's kind of always been this unspoken cloud. And for her to come, she's like, I wasn't shocked that she was there because I would hope she was there. But now that we had this conversation, there's a cloud that has been lifted that I didn't even know I was still carrying. And right, I was like, that's right, interesting yeah. around it. Because, yeah, it's everybody. And the crazy thing is, it's not even like it was a hidden secret. The world knew there was the this world, race, you know? Right. Oh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm definitely interested to see what that's about. Um, yeah. And then Barack Obama's book came out. I, oh, hold on, before we move on to Barack, Barack Obama, I uh -huh. just like, I teared up and you know, I'm not a crier. Yeah. But like, I teared up when I saw the promo, the promo video, because I saw it on, um, on Will Smith's IG. Yeah. And, and then when they started talking about, this was even before they even showed that, you know, like the original Aunt Viv was going to yeah. be making a, you know, show or whatever, because they had all the kids on the, yep. on the, on the, on the grown ass adults now but all the kids <laughs> on, the, on the sofa whatever and then they started talking about you know the father um yeah Jim um, Avery. james Avery. thank you jim jim james Avery, and literally and then they showed the scene where you know uh will was talking about his real father and that was one of the one of the biggest acting uh, mentorships that yeah. he got from james because james has been a a Shakespearean actor and brought all of that gravitas to that to that <laughs> character, and they brought that on and 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 they started talking about like you know his impact on the show and it just it, it broke my heart yeah, like it just yeah. he like I, I wish that he was alive to be able to see this kind of reunion happen. I yeah. mean obviously he's he's watching from above and all that stuff, but damn that was like that. And was I wonder if they're gonna actually like really like especially with janet kind of address the elephant you know or if it's just like okay we're glad to see you glad to be here blah 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 it's like okay are we actually going to talk about it a little bit at least like i feel like I and i don't know why as a, i don't know why as a viewer i want that but i just feel like if that's been the narrative for so long <laughs> and like as a viewer we also had to go through seeing a different viv you know I feel there's a, at least a little conversation, even if it's just a quick two minute blurb. I feel it's if clear they the talk about it at all, it's going to be like a quick two minute blurb. Yeah. Like they are not gonna they're not gonna dwell on that. Like no. And the way that the way that it was presented in that little short little like promo, the fact that, you know, hey, I got a surprise for y'all right. to me says whatever beef that will and original Aunt Viv had behind the scenes, it's, they worked that shit yeah. out. Yeah. And it's gonna be like, it's gonna be the entanglement conversation. Do you know what I mean? Like when yeah. he's sitting up there with his wife yeah. and talking about how, how his wife has stepped out on the relationship yeah. with this other dude, and it, now this is called an entanglement. And he's looking there <laughs> like. Speaking of the entanglement, that's funny. <laughs> like I saw on their IG, 
they were talking about that episode and they wanted to re-record it because they were about to leave to go somewhere or they had just got back from vacay or something like that. And so they were tired. And so they said, here we go. We recorded it. They said, and we saw it. We're like, damn, people are going to talk about this. Like, he's like, I'm over here looking crazy. And they're like, okay, whatever. We'll just release it. And he's like, and sure enough, we released that shit. <laughs> and he said, and now I'm a meme forever for that shit. I was right. Like, yeah, you were. <laughs> he got that that sad looking face. <laughs> like, like looking at like, her. Like he was like, and he's like, I told Jada we should re-record it because like we're gonna become these memes. He's like, and it's not even like that. And Jada was just like, Oh, just put it, we'll be fine. And but at like, the end of the day, than it was. But at the end of the day, they put that out there. It yeah. was like a thing for like literally like a week and a half. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's like lived on, like, you know, entanglement does, it's now part of pop culture. Oh, now, absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But nobody's really looking at them sideways as yeah. a result of this. So I feel like... Well, some people you know, on Twitter were. <laughs> well, like I mean... Twitter was kind of having a field Right. Day. There are some people that are, you know, Capricorns that never let it go. <laughs> Me. <laughs> All day. Right. Hashtag. All day. Right. All day. <laughs> but I do feel like at the end of the day, getting back to your point about like the original Aunt Viv, like they hashed out whatever they need to hash out. So whatever we're going to see, it's, it's going be to like be like a, a very watered down version. Yeah. It's going to be a very watered down version of that conversation because it's not going to have the emotional breakthrough that I think we all want to see. Yeah. Like That's I would want to see that facilitated by like either Oprah or Gail. Like, or, y- I wanna, or Yala. Or Yala. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we need a Yala in this bitch. <laughs> oh, but, but yeah, I got my I got my Barack book right here, and this thing is hefty. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be reading this for the Fizz next is, Fizz is listening to the Audible. I downloaded the yeah. Audible. Yeah, Fizz yeah. listened to the Audible. He said it was like 29 hours or something yes, like that. Bitch. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, 29 yeah. hours. Yeah, it's so long. Yeah. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Audible's nope. 29 hours. Literally, because I he did said the he was like, he was like, I'm four years. He's like, I'm four or three hours in, and he just now started talking about running for Congress. I said, bitch, stop playing. Uh-uh. <laughs> See, no, nope. yeah, literally, said, it's like yeah. 700 plus pages. Uh-huh. Nope, yeah. it's a feast. The, the last. The last book I bought by a politician was the Hillary book. Uh-huh. And that was, that was, that was a tough, that was a t- it was a good read, but it was tough to get through. I was like, never yeah. again. No, nope, mm-hmm. I'm. But see, Barack just has a way with words. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but it's going to be a moment. It's going to be a minute. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you let us know how that's working out. I did the Wait, right. how, I mean, the holiday season is this- coming up, so you got time. This is yeah. well. I, I'm not doing it, but yeah. um, I, I'd rather have a puzzle. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, how? What book? What number book is this for you? Because remember, at the beginning of the year, you said you were going to read ten books. I think it was like ten yeah. books, right? And we'll we'll year. save that for later because we talk about it in an episode coming up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, but yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah. Like, what yeah. book number is this for you? This is book number seven, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I had, I finished the Mariah one. Mm-hmm. That was the last book. And, oh, and no, actually, really... the, the last book I read was The Decolonizing by Edgar. Okay. Because um, I, I read the I read Mariah, the Mariah one. It was like not a lot that was new. I was kind of disappointed. I was like, mm, there wasn't a lot of tea. I was expecting there to be more tea than what there actually was. Yeah. It, it was decent. Like hers was, I, I did the Audible on that as well. I did that when I was in yeah. PV. Um, it was interesting just because like on the Audible, she's like singing the lyrics and stuff like that. So. Kind of gave it a little See, more character. That's what I need. That's what I I'm I'm done buying buying these books from these <laughs> celebrities. Like if, especially if you were if you were an artist like Mariah, like I'd rather yeah. have I'd rather have the audible and hear yeah. you singing and shit rather than like reading, you know. Yeah. A lot of and that's why like, I like Audible. That's why I like yeah. Audible, because especially with celebrities like real people, like if they're narrating their books, it just better. feels that much more like, okay, I'm hearing the story mm-hmm. as if they're telling me. So it feels like story time. You just you okay. you feel it feels easy to sit there and just you get take the reflections it all and things like I that. Miss, yeah. Because the thing I missed with Mariah's book was the darlings and the you know, like and the affectation. And she had that in like, Audible. See, mm-hmm. damn, yeah. damn, yeah, like, now I got like, this My hair was tangled, and... darling, and the ocean, <laughs> like, like, it had her inflection, yeah. so that one was now a I got this, one. Now I got this fucking book sitting up in my bookshelf that I'm never going to look at ever again. <laughs> See, I like getting the books, like, for at least, like, the Barack ones and the Michelle, I like having the book, and I'm glad I did the Audible mm-hmm. as well, because I think this would be kind of tough just to sit for 700 plus pages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jerome, what was the last... Audible. What was the last Audible book that you that you listened to? 
I don't listen to a lot um, of Audible books. And I, we, I have Audible, first of all. I was paying for Audible and never was using it. I was just one of them people like, oh, I got Amazon. I was like, oh, just add that on to it or whatever. But Fizz <laughs> right. listens to Audible. So I yeah. like, that's like my monthly gift to him. Like, yeah. buy yourself a book, girl. And I think he's yeah. on like 13 books this year. Like he oh, wow. yeah. sits there and just Audible, 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 Audible. So, mm-hmm. um. I think the last one was, oh my God, what am I, I, I forgot her name last episode too. God damn it. Um, <laughs> oh, you get, you get my, you get the Dewan <laughs> The name, the mom on um, Blackish. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross? Tracy Ellis no, Ross? No, no, the, uh, no. Oh, oh Jennifer um, Lewis. Jennifer, Jennifer yeah, Lewis, Lewis, yes. I, her book was the last book that I listened oh, to. Oh, okay. Audible. How was it? Yeah, and I loved it. I loved it. And it's very much her. It yeah. is. See, that, that's what I would need in my life. Everything. I was like, come through, Auntie. Like, it just felt real good. She's like, I'm life. not spending my life <laughs> fucking with you <laughs> in these <laughs> streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It was, it was, it was really good. Time for that. <laughs> <laughs> you literally get all of that in the Audible. So, like, yeah, if, okay. Yeah. I might have like, to pick that up now. Yeah. And do the Audible, really you better. get 30 free days and you get two credits. In the mm-hmm. thirty days, so I did the I did the Mariah because I wanted to listen to that on mm-hmm. uh, vacay, and then I did the Barack because I want to hear his inflections, even though I bought yeah, more yeah. of them. But um, yeah, I'm, I think mine is actually up tomorrow, so I'm about to cancel that bitch. But I do yeah. want because you get to re- keep them. You get to keep them when you cancel <laughs> exactly. it. So I do want to get the Andre Leon Talley book too, and I want to hear his in the Audible. So I might wait for. There's an app. Thank you, community member. Let's talk about the Erica Badu years, because that would that be the only thing I'd be interested in. Oh, oh, I know who sent that. Wait, Andre uh, was Leon? it Michael? Was it Michael? Oh, that never mind. It? I'm thinking of never mind. Oh, yeah, the, never uh, mind. Was it I'm Michael thinking, or Ryan? I'm um, thinking of Andre three thousand. That's sent it because you're talking about sent the free Audible. Or no, um, or, or free, totally like, about the library. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah, um, she's out. She's from out here in Seattle. Um, mm, yeah. and so thank you for that okay. because that's where I was actually doing a lot of my kind of quote unquote audibles this year. But mm-hmm. the hard thing about the library was they only have certain amount of same like as physical books, only mm-hmm. a certain amount of like downloads or whatever you could do yeah. at a time. So it's kind of yeah. harder to get some of the popular books at the beginning. And literally the wait times would be like 26 weeks and shit like that. Mm-mm, um, nope, but another book that I started on the library one is the um, autobiography of the guy that's in Wham! with George Michael. And he was, he was talking about his perspective of being in Wham! with a huge star like jo- George Michael and how they came up together. Um, you know, wake me up. That's Wham! I was, uh, in my mind, I was getting him confused with a guy that was... Um, in the band with um uh oh freddie mercury probably no come on 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 oh, and that George. guy yes I, and my you said it and then i in my mind i, I pictured yeah. his face for some reason i was like oh so wait I have a minute that one going right now but i don't know if i'm gonna finish that one in time because you only have mm-hmm. 20 days to do it and i find again since i'm working from home i'm not listening as often um, I don't mm-hmm. like to listen to music and stuff when I'm working, it, when like, you're working. especially when I'm doing a lot of data stuff. I got to yeah. think, and I feel like that kind of distracts me. So it takes me a little longer to kind of get through the books. But Barack is next on deck. He is next on mm. deck. Are y'all doing anything for Thanksgiving? It is when this episode comes out. Yeah. It's the week of Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Are y'all doing we? anything? <clears throat> nope. We're chilling at the crib, of course. We, Same. we are. We're driving up to our friends in Rhode Island, um, Todd and Tony. Hey, boys. We're going to um, drive on up there and spend a couple of days. I think we're actually going to go up there Tuesday of next nice. week and just stay through the whole weekend. Yeah. They, they're they part of, like, our quarantine crew. They've been, like, quarantining, like, really religiously. Um, we've been really religiously quarantining, so they're about the only people that we want to spend time with. In fact, we were planning on going um, home you know, back yeah. to the Midwest for Christmas. And I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think mm-hmm. we so are either. We're just going to yeah. stay. Which breaks my, oh, it's going to make me foo-foo. Oh, <laughs> so I, I'm an emotional wreck today. Like today was yeah. kind of a tough day. I was starting to warm yeah. before we kind of hopped on. But um, it's just tough just because with my niece and things are crazy there. And I have a new niece that I still haven't met in person. Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen my family since like last Christmas. Like, so I feel emotionally I'm very fragile on that regard. Yeah. <laughs> But mm-hmm. logically, it just doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. the tough thing and right now. 
I do feel like I, I kind of feel like when we look back on 2020, this is going to be the, the year that everyone just kind of gave up, you know, like the time just is kind of like there were no graduations, no weddings, no like no like vacate, no major vacations. Yeah, like there were all these year. things that it just ended, you know, because of Corona. And I just like I was talking to my mom the other day last night I was talking to my mom last night and we were just saying like yeah you know I mean it will be nice to get together for for like Thanksgiving it'd be nice to get together for Christmas but at the end of the day at the risk of you know one of us right. yeah. you know getting in contact with something and then that you know being the cause and we being unsymptom and unsymptom yeah. addict and like it just it's <sighs> not even not even worth it let's just get the year over with so we can start over you know we already got two vaccines that's going to be coming out here in the next couple of weeks and all yeah. that kind of shit we got a new president's going to be you know working his way into the white house so like you know <laughs> let's just let's just get this year over with so yeah. that we can start 2021 and start doing some shit yeah, uh, I, so. I mean i i, I agree with y'all i um you know i think it's the best bet is just to stay home as, as hard as it's going to be, you know, um, at the end of the day, live to see another day, you know, yeah. don't, don't chance your future on one yeah. day when you can potentially live to have several more days in your future. Like yeah. just, you know, do the math. Like it, it, it makes the most sense, you know, and I, saw, uh, I, I have to say this, I, I have uh -huh. to say this too, because, it's easy for us to say that as people who are in relationships and we have right. someone to see on a regular basis. Yeah. To my mm -hmm. single people out there, yeah. I see y'all, I hear y'all. I am going to be trying my hardest to be reaching out to my friends, especially those who are quarantined solo by themselves, you know, yeah. to just check mm -hmm. in more because it's, it's those who are more willing to risk it all. It's those who are yeah. the ones that are going it's out true. more and trying to travel more and et cetera. You know, so I I encourage those who are fortunate to be quarantined with someone else to check on those who aren't. So that way we are trying to all move forward together. Yeah. Because I can honestly say personally, as a, if I was single and alone in an apartment by myself with no one else, <laughs> I would be having a hard ass time as an extrovert. Yeah. Such yeah. a hard yeah. time, yeah, totally. you know? Yeah. So I, I just want to let those know who are listening that are doing it by themselves, we see you keep pushing, keep Absolutely. pushing, DM us, you know, like slide in our posts and our comments. We will engage with you, you know, like whatever we, we, we can do, we will try to at least keep you encouraged throughout this. Yeah. But yeah. please, everyone stay home. Like at this point, every like businesses are closing again and people are going to be without a job. And the only reason why things were open was to help these small businesses try to stay open and pay their employees so people can have pay to be paid. And people forgot about the guidelines and now they ruin that opportunity for other people. Yeah. So they said a Zoom Thanksgiving is better than an ICU Christmas. And I was like, absolutely. You know, that's a real absolutely. That part. That's a real yeah. ass statement. So be safe yeah. out there. And community. I saw I saw a meme that said if you want to die before Christmas, go go out on Thanksgiving. Ooh, I said that's, the fuck. That's like, yeah. Oh, they're trying to get them Black True. Friday and deals. And is that real? Get them right. Black Friday deals online and try to get their PS5 like I am. Because <laughs> that PS5 <laughs> out here is, is struggle. It's struggle fest, but stay your ass indoors. <laughs> Let me tell you, show up on on fucking Cyber Monday. I'm telling y'all. Hmm. November 30th, you better be clocked in like you were for Ivy Park today. <laughs> you know, or yesterday. <laughs> and I know we got like literally like uh, two minutes, but I got to need some more drip. I got me drip two, drip 2.2, 2, whatever the shit is. I was <laughs> got mad. me some joggers. I like, had my size and a mask, which was the large. I got, I, me said, a crop uh, top. I got me a crop top tee. An Ivy Park crop top okay. tee. Ooh, I'm ready to stun on these hoes with this belly out. Come on, I say wanted something. that hoodie it. Let so it bad. Yes. I looked at the whole collection and I was like, I'm not going to wear any of this. Like, I just got the joggers because I'm like, I'm already in sweatpants at the crib. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I can yeah. do that. The, uh, the new one had like these black sneakers. I was like, I've been looking for a black pair of sneakers. And I was like, oh, these are cute. Okay, then I'll spend my money because I already was looking for a black pair of sneakers. 
And then I saw the crop top. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want, I want the hoodie because, like I said on the uh, few episodes ago, or several episodes ago, when I'm in like a t-shirt with no underwear, a hoodie with no underwear, that's when I feel the most sexy. So to be in an Ivy Park hoodie <laughs> with just some underwear on, bitch, I'm about bad. to be like some dance yeah. for you shit, bitch, in the background. And Ivy Park and Beyonce <laughs> and Yvonne, her uh, publicist, you see the other, we talk about Beyonce every episode. Mm. We can get some at the door. Right. <laughs> Come on. She, Come didn't on. she like, she, uh, she gave like a whole, she gave her whole wardrobe to like, who was it? A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, I saw her, because her mom posts everything. You yeah. know, Beyonce don't be posted nothing, but her mom her be posting mom everything. Be yeah. <laughs> everything. Her and I saw her, I saw her, she post, She had sent the whole goddamn wardrobe to, like, either, like, a, a dancer or a, one yeah. of the models or the fit models or something like that or whatever, and the, the girl just broke down crying. Oh, yeah. I was like, that's, that's so I strange. just want to know how they get the size for everybody. Like, that's what, I, and the addresses. Like, I'm like, how do you get a, a hint that something's coming? Do they sign your DMs? Like, can I get your ad? You know, like, that's what I always They probably like, go to their publicist or something, or, like, like, their yeah. assistant. I'm like, logistically, how do they find all this shit out? That's yeah. slick. Go ahead, Ivy Park. But, uh, but anyway, wash your hands, wash your legs, wash your ass, be safe, community, happy Thanksgiving, eat up a storm, because I am. <laughs> yes, man. And, uh, um, like Jarrell said, if you're single, we, we see you. If you want to hop on an IG live or something like that, you know, I'll hop on in a heartbeat. So uh, see you next week. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Bye, Bye y'all. y'all. Oh.